my friends, and welcome back to week six of the KCM. Season two with Zerg versus Terran and a fantastic lineup this week. We're getting started on Troy. Let's go. Pulling up our beautiful lineup. We are in the era now of post ASL. So our lineups are looking hot. Mind, Royal, Light, Snow, Bisu, Mini, Sulky, Queen, Saxory. Everything looking good here. So nice to see Sulky back in that lineup. But uh, this first game, Saxon versus Mind on Troy. I was not expecting them to send out Mind first here. I thought that Mind was in this lineup as a sniper for Protoss. Yeah, well, he is, but I think this actually will still work out well for Terran because if he can take out Saxry here, which, which which would be the ideal scenario, because we want Mind won't probably not take out someone like Sulky, but he can beat Saxry. So if he can beat Saxry and then go up against a Protoss player, that's going to be ideal because another chance again, a little two for one, and uh, starting to put Terran out ahead. So I actually think this might work out well for Terran, but only providing Mind can take out Saxry here. This lineup right here for Terran is, I think, the best chance that uh, they've had this season of taking a week of the KCM of getting that first place but still a scary scary lineup here from Protoss they've just been putting out their A game every single week and taking home the results uh, as the weeks progress they're just getting further and further ahead here yeah, and, and honestly, like, I would probably put the odds of winning of this this game this week here probably like forty percent Protoss, about thirty five percent Terran, twenty five percent Zerg. But Saxry's going to perform here. Like, if if Zerg want to go on a good streak, I, I really do feel like Saxry's got to somehow figure out a way of taking out Mind because it's going to be so difficult for Sulky to carry Queen going up against that Protoss lineup and Light and Royal waiting in the wings. Well, Saxory's got a decent build here, right? He's gone for 12 hatch, um, and mine's not gone for the 8 racks. On this map, 8 racks is very, very strong. If you lose control of your natural, you can lose control of your assimilators, and that could get you relegated to an island. But in this case, he's just going to send that drone scout out and find out that his build has not been countered. He's going to have a nice time here, kind of getting into his game. Uh, and we'll see what kind of build he wants to pull out when everything goes correctly here in the early game. Yeah, I mean, we do have this nice little wall in from Mind, but that is going to delay his command center by quite a significant portion. He wants to be e extra safe because he scouted last and did set now a second scout, so he has done an ultra safe wall in here, just in case actually was going for any kind of early game pressure. But that will delay the command center by quite a significant. Oh, wait, it's barracks! Look at this. This is what I, this is why I tell people to always click on the building because in the first few stages it looks the exact same as a command center. If you don't click on it, sometimes they'll trick you and it'll be a, a barracks instead. A double barracks play here for mind, and of course the gas is here. The academy is on the way, and I don't think Saxer has any idea that this has uh, begun. If he builds a couple of sunken colonies here, it's just a straight up win, but this is all about deception here for mine. Yeah, absolutely. Like even, even the placement of the buildings is very deliberate and this just just for the purposes of obfuscating exactly what he's doing. He's got the Marines out in front, so it's even harder to get back there and scout the barracks now. Uh, he's going to be trying to delay these lings as long as possible with this SCV. That's why you see it dancing back and giving its life. But that should tip Saxry off. If, if I'm that Zerg player and I see him run his SCV back like that, I'm thinking to myself, you're either delaying me from attacking you because you're weak or you're trying to hide something. Mm, well, let's see if Saxry reads into that. Uh, he's going to come up here to the high ground and he should see the number of Marines and that is a definite tip off. He sees the second barracks yes. here with one ling and an immediate sunken colony here. As long as he gets the two sunken colonies up on top of that ramp, he should be fine. He's going to start one. I'm surprised he's not going to start a second just yet. No, it's actually kind of weird that he's not. I think he's trying. I think he thinks that he's fine with just the one and then adding a second delayed. And he's trying to optimize. That's why we see him like only barely now having the minerals to throw that down. 
But the medic's already kind of here, so he has to be really careful with how he engages. He's doing a good job of slowing down his marines with these links. He's trying to get back. There are two firebats that are choosing not to wall and instead come and help with the push. So now he can't even counterattack with the links. He has to bring the links back to fight this force because he will just get busted otherwise. And he has to be very careful. Well, he's delayed this enough, I think. The second sunken colony is going to be very close to finishing here. He starts at third as well, realizing what a difficult situation he's in. Two sunken colonies isn't enough. Third one on the way, he does force it back, even though the Lings don't engage. That was beautifully done by Saxory. Just threatening the engage with the Lings was enough to turn Mind around just for a second, and that's going to slow down the bust sufficiently. Really, really well done by Saxory, and I think he is just light years ahead at this point in this game. Oh my god, getting on top of the barracks as well. Yeah, this is huge. I think Mind completely misread the game state and thought that he would go for a Ling response. He was waiting for the Firebats to come and buffer and didn't want to risk losing all his Marines to get the Ling swallowing up. But now look at this Ling counterattack. He's just going to be running circles around him, causing a lot of damage, a lot of pressure. He doesn't even have to kill Mind here. Just any slowdown is going to be painful. Like he's going to kill this SUV building the factory. That's going to slow down the tech timings. The Mutalists are going to be on the way moment. We haven't even started any turrets yet for mine, so yeah, everything's looking very flimsy for mine. Whereas Saxry's lining, lining himself up nicely going into this early mid game. Yeah, Saxry can do whatever he wants right now. I, I don't know if he's going to just uh, ramp up the pressure here with the mutas or if he wants to get into more of a macro position. Mine is just light years behind with no CC in sight. He's going to start turrets here in the natural without even being able to mine from this location. So. His build is just so, so bad right now. It is really, really rough. He will have plus one on the way, and he has a good clump of Marines, but, I mean, the CC is just so far away. I guess he's going to ramp, just keep ramping Marines and try to bust the front, maybe? But three Sunkens on high ground, how are you going to get in there? Well, he's basically going to be playing, essentially, one base Terran, just... But, but because he has to defend these natural buildings of the depots and stuff, he can't afford to like sacrifice them. He has to play like this, so it's a bit awkward, but he will eventually either try and kill Saxory or just try and event, uh, lift the racks and expand. But until then, he's got to stabilize, get control over these zones. Does get one of those mutalists so far, so he is doing a good job of not taking any damage to the mutas initially, but like you say, still only mining on one base, so he is play, basically playing one base Terran for quite some time now. Saxory kind of uh, hamstringing his economy here, not building any additional drones, ramping up that mutilus production um, before adding on any more uh, economy here. Let's see uh, what he can do with these mutas because uh, if he doesn't deal good damage here and he doesn't ramp up the, that drone production, then there is an opportunity for mine to maybe make a, a comeback here. Yes, yeah, so actually he's playing in a way to end the game as quickly as possible, but it does give Mind one of the best comeback potentials. It's actually though, you know, he's not a slouch. He's extremely adept at Mutalist Micro, and uh, he might not be like necessarily like one as good as some of these other professional players, but honestly, like he he's always impressed me with his ability to execute even in really tough situations. So I'm not too scared for him, even though he's really low eco right now. He will send a drone to the top left-hand corner, taking that hatchery indicates that there may be some more eco coming here. And he's already up to that, I think, 11 meter count uh, with plus one likely on the way here. So he should be switching into drone production now. He's not going to lose too many of these mutas. He's just going to uh, hug the sides of the bases here and try to pick off any free buildings that he can uh, by bouncing glaives and just picking off these turrets one by one. Yeah, look at this Mutus Micro. It's actually pretty phenomenal stuff. Like, uh, I wouldn't say he's like the best at Mutus Micro or anything, but he certainly is better than some of the other players we see that don't quite get the same kind of value out of their units. So and he's doing a beautiful job of like clicking far ahead of where the Marines are so that the Mutus go deeper in, but like essentially fly faster and deal more DPS overall. So I actually really like um, how he's executing his Mutus. The problem is though, we got Dropship coming around this, this six o'clock side of the map, dropping into the main base, unscouted right now. He's going to get a full stick run into the main here. Wow, he's going to get a ton of damage with these Marines, and this is exactly what mine needs to bring this game back. He's going to kill it. Oh, so many drones while wow, the entire line goes down. Two drones only managed to escape, and he's going to go after the Spire now. Saxory in panic mode. He's sending everything back home. This could be oh, the beginning wow. of a huge comeback for mine crazy mind is such a genius level player he's basically like flash without the mechanics insane even going to get some damage on those mutas 
uh, when they finally get cleaned up. You don't think you... Oh, you might be able to get away with this dropship just barely because the Scourge didn't quite intercept it. But yeah, crazy damage. The Spire is being remade. He's going to start to trickle up some drones. He has got that third hatchery, but no minerals right now. He killed those drones at a critical timing right when he wanted to start producing some, some more workers. So now Saxory's kind of caught between a rock and a hard place. He needs to maintain this mute account. He can't afford to replace them. There's not even a Spire finished yet. So now he has to be a lot more passive and can't really punish mine. Yeah, he can only build drones right now, and that's probably what he's going to be doing here for a little bit. Another dropship could head out on the map, though, and try to hit that base in the top left. It is on an island, so Ling reinforcements will not be possible. I think it's heading out right now, but it's just been spotted. Yeah. Okay, well, we have two Scourge ready, so the, we have Scourge that can chill on the, the south, and the Mutants can go and try and hunt this down. But it looks like mine's being clever. He, he realizes that this dropship's not going to be long for this world, so he's going to sneak it back around and get it back into the safety of his uh, perimeter here. Yeah, he will keep that alive for now, and getting a CC up as well. Hive is done, um, but the drone count is suffering here. So, oh! No, mm. no natural at all for mine. I well, thought he was going to start a CC. Honestly, I think he's just going to go Guardians and kill him if mine can't produce enough here. Mine's still only making uh, two racks worth of production, uh, three racks worth of production here. So, and he's had his Marine count shaved off quite significantly. He's now just now got um, irradiates to really punish these mutas, but Saxby's quite good at splitting his mutas, so he still might be okay. Hydra Guardian going to be the answer here. Meanwhile, yeah. Mind heading across the map. Does he have enough back at home to deal with these 11 mutas? And will Saxory come in here and realize that that army has left? He didn't have anything sitting right out in front of the natural, but I think he sees it now with some sort of red dot there in the middle of the map. However, his mutas are not moving and the dropship is coming into the top left, building a couple of emergency, emergency sunken colonies. But I mean... Are those going to be finished in time? I don't think so. He might be losing that third base. Yeah, he might just be sacrificing that base. He knows that the, it will take a mind a little time to ferry his units over because he killed both the gases. So he's kind of also hoping he can catch like the vessels or the dropship with the scourge while they're like maneuvering up here. Now that finally the mules are coming up to see if they can clear up this force. And the hatchery's not taking any damage yet, so there's a chance he could still save it. Oh, look at this beautiful irradiate though. Oh. It's taking him a while to get that out of there as well. Quite a significant bruising. And oh, but look at that first scourge you're gonna get both for these vessels, it looks like. I think Saxory's done enough, but the, the mutas have been bruised up enough that he's probably gonna get this hatchery. That's for damn sure. Wow, he's gonna get the hatchery. Back down to two base versus one base here. Still a uh, playable position for Saxory, but that is a huge blow. He really hasn't added on that many drones, and that was a significant portion of his economy that just went down, making Guardians over here at the bottom left. And they are significantly more powerful now that two science vessels were killed off. Yeah. Um, yeah. More Scourge can be produced here, and that one single vessel is just not going to have their Radiate necessary to fight this. Does he make a Devourer here, though? I don't see... Um, or we can't tell if the Devourers have been made. He's stopping the dropship from coming in and uh, dropping across this uh, this bridge here, or over top of this uh, wall here. Um, but that's not gonna last forever. He will get the Marines out on the uh, on the map and making a ton of sunken colonies back home. This is the gambit here from Saxory. Yeah, he's low on minerals, so he won't make the Devourer here. And he's pretty sure there won't be any wraiths or anything. He's got a trickle of Hydras to come and back this up. But right now, he just needs to get a big zone control with these Guardians, lock out any chance of uh, mine securing this natural expansion again, because the CC's not even finished yet. He can't even float it. Not getting the Scourge connections on these vessels yet, which is a little bit unfortunate. He needs to get those vessels if he can. The vessels want to run back to the safety of their base, and the Scourge are going to let them for the time being. But right now, like Saxory's putting him into check, and uh, if he doesn't like think of a way of maneuvering his pieces around the board it's going to be checkmate in just a moment here well he could just kill the assimilators but he's not going for that right now he's actually hitting the barracks um dropship is looking for locations it could possibly assault maybe the main base or the natural might have an opening that he can get some damage now he's going after the assimilators this is a big move here from saxory all the marines are coming in from multiple angles and irradiate does go down a wraith is out but it gets hit by a scourge the hydra dies just a moment before it can get a single Beautiful shot off there point. on the wraith and this wraith is going to deal so much damage to these guardians even forcing them all back oh man Man. I mean, can he kill wow. the assimilator here? 
I think he will get the assimilator, but it was really well played from mind there. And he has the dropship coming in at the optimal moment when Saxory has like hardly anything left and everything's going to be rallied to the front to defend. He could have made a pair of scourge to defend against drops, but didn't. And uh, now it looks like he's going to be a little bit punished for that and has got a few units rallied across, but no more guardians. So these hydras have like lost their potency and these marines have plus two upgrades. So they move, they move through the hydras much quicker than usual and they, they basically counter the unit already since they do half damage. Dude, is Mind actually going to bring this one back? It's crazy Maybe. to think from all of the the wildness that's happened in this game, he might actually be able to win this, but it's still Saxory. I still think that Saxory has an okay position here, even though he's lost all of his army and the upgrades are looking fantastic for Mind. He still doesn't have that natural and he's going to mine out soon. Yeah, he's only got a tiny amount of production to work with. We need to get one of his barracks sniped as well. So it's only two barracks worth of Marines now coming out as well. So doesn't have any chance at breaking the front because of these sunken walls. So the only way he would win is like by these little skirmishes, like irradiating, dropping Marines into the main and what have you. So yeah, he has done quite a significant amount of damage to Saxory. But like you say, he's not really been able to mine from more than one, for more than one base. And he's only just now taking his natural when his main is already starting to be mined out. This Guardian Force is looking scary uh we've only got two vessels here and i don't think we're gonna make another uh, drop ship in this game because the the vessels are just at such a premium right now off of that one gas or that one gas and that one starport so uh, probably just pure vessel production from here. No more counterattacks. Saxer is going to be able to hit the front. And it's all going to come down. Oh, he's got one armor here as well. So this is really, really strong. This, I, I don't think we have any upgrades here from Saxer at all. Unless there's a plus one on the attack. No, no, no plus one on the air army either. Yeah, these guardians would usually two shot these marines. But with the plus one armor on the marines now, it takes three shots from these guardians to, to make mincemeat of them. So it'd be a lot harder for Saxer to chew through this Terran setup here. Oh man, and a, a cloaked Wraith? How did he manage to afford cloak during all of this? Well, here comes the attack into the front. The Oh my god, the Marines are just mauling this right now. The upgrade advantage is working so well for mine. He's going to be able to force all of this back. Sacks are going to lose every single Guardian here. He does manage to pick off all of the Marines because of those three Guardians standing on top of each other, able to pick off a lot of these, but... Mines managed to shove him back one more time. Saxory taking another base in the top left. He hit a drone up there in the top left, and he managed to retake that base. That's a big moment for Saxory. Yeah, it's an absolutely crazy tempo, low economy game we have here. And I actually kind of really do love these low economy games. We finally see a defile amount being thrown down from Saxory. I hope it's not going to be too little too late. Uh, Terran is now becoming mined out, so it will kind of essentially be one base Terran still once these minerals dry up. Does catch two of these race with the Scourge as well. That's a nice little pickup. That's a nice little win for Saxory. Yeah, that is a big win there. Uh, unfortunately, though, he's done with Guardian play. I'm not going to continue to make those. Switching now over to Defiler. He should have Lurker on the way as well, I think. Um, or is he just going to go completely Defiler uh, Hydra here and just... Uh, pray well, for plagues yeah i think i think the idea is that he i think he will get the lurker tech still but i think the idea will be mainly to rely on the plagues and hydras to try and get the cost efficiency needed to make something happen here but i still think he's going to make lurkers right and with the upgrades being so heavily advantaged for mind uh, you have to get the plagues down the plagues are what's going to equalize uh those upgrade advantages going to make those not really matter yeah. anymore so he really needs to get those down. He finally gets a Nidus in the top left. That's a super big moment. Can he get a missile? Oh, not quite able to get that. That was really, really close there. Saxory needs to get any value that he can out of these Scourge and uh, stop mine from getting that value out of these uh, irradiates here. He can't break up there, but he is making another dropship. I think he's going to go for the top left. I think he, he definitely wants to. It's just he needed to wait for a dropship to be produced before he could even assault this location. It's a shame, though, because if he'd made that dropship more preemptively, he could have been hitting this already. The Nidus was only just now being set up, and the Lurker eggs are on the way. So now that this attack has been delayed so much that we actually will be able to defend this now, Sexury, or at least have a chance at defending this. Yeah, here comes that drop. If he snipes this dropship with the Scourge, it could mm. be it lights out here for mine. No, not able to catch on to that. And the drop will get off. Now, will he 
have lurkers through this Nidus in time to actually stop this. He's just going to see it now. Okay, he brings the Hydras forward. He brings the lurkers through the Nidus, I imagine. A Defiler should be there as well. This is going to be a tight hold, but it should be a hold here. Yeah, I mean, one thing oh, to... he gets two of the lurkers down so quickly. Mine's target fire really on point, and has plenty of irradiates. Uh, just going to be cleaning up the other two as well. Actually, Sectory's in a little bit of trouble here because he's he needs to defile out right now, and Consume's only just finishing up. So oh, he's giving oh, he's it up. Just evacuate. He's just going to evacuate. He realizes how untenable his position is here. Wow. Okay. Well. Um. It's definitely not optimal. It's not what you're looking for here, Saxory, but it's better than losing everything. Uh, he could try to expand somewhere else. Another expansion's coming up for Mind right now. He's trying to take center right. The dropship is still alive, and dude, this is uh, this is becoming a really weird game. Is he going to get the drop? Oh, it was so close. Wow. Five HP on that. One hit. Yeah, if that dropship goes down, he can't even get the army out of top left. I just want to point that out. He got another dropship in the middle, but this, is, this game is wild. Like... Uh, probably one of the most craziest tempo swing back and forth games we've had that has been this low economy. Yeah, and now Saks are going to go for the good old Defiler push towards the natural. We don't have the army in position to stop this, but it is moving into that position now. Uh, Hydra's going to meet with that uh, army there in the middle of the map. He manages to gun down another Lurker. Dude, the, this upgrade advantage is so brutal right now. Saks yeah. just can't even get close to the army without losing something. Uh, the, the Defiler gets caught with its pants down in the middle of the map. Defilers are just so bad in the center of the map. They're much better when they're assaulting bases or defending bases. And it's going to basically get the Dark Swarm down. Oh, no. doesn't even get the Dark Swarm down just as it dies. That's, he was hoping for one little gambit of like maybe getting some damage done, setting up like a bit of a chain reaction to follow up on. But look at all these vessels that are still out on the map. They're just going to shark down any Defiler that dares come out of the natural expansion of Saxory. And that might be all she wrote for the Zerke. He's going to take this base at no, uh, nine o'clock and hopefully oh look at the base at the top right yeah he's gonna make a nidus in the top right and then like try and take that base as well to try and get up to full gas that way he must have drops i didn't even know that he had drops why not put a defiler in a drop uh in an overlord and try to get it over there um we gotta do something here is actually because this base is gonna get shut down and we've got maybe one or two gamuts left here before it there's just nothing um, you know, and mind is just way too big to, to even deal with. Yeah, I mean, uh, Sakshri is basically just doing anything he can to try and, and like claw his way back into this game. It's, it's a really bad situation, no matter what. Like, mine's already mining on three base. Yeah, he's just going to tap out. This is really unfortunate. GG. Damn, 1,700 minerals in the bank. Never feels good to tap out with that situation, but getting shut down on those extra bases. The Defiler was a little bit too late to save off left. Dude, what a crazy, crazy game crazy. to start us off here this week's week six of KCM. Looks to be a banger. That last game really speaking to the robustness of mind as a player. Dude, hanging on against Saxory. How did he manage to pull it off? The upgrades were a huge factor, I think, and now he's going to have to take on Snow here on Dark Origin. Dude, <laughs> setting up Snow is kind of savage right now. Yeah, no, it's like a no-nonsense move here. And you don't want to get let mine get any potential value. If he takes out someone like Bisu or Mini, as well as Saxory, like Terran are feeling a little bit too pretty right now. So instead, we're going to send out Snow and just try and, you know, clean up this this guy right now before he gets his mental state any more solid. Because right now, he, he, he's, he's full, in, in his full momentum, I imagine, after winning that game. Yeah, that was, uh, <laughs> that was extremely close, and I'm sure... Uh, after a win like that, you've got to be feeling great. I know that anytime we have a scrappy, scrappy game on the ladder and I end up pulling a win, um, I feel fantastic. So I'm sure that mine is feeling the same sort of high right now. The high that only a great StarCraft game can give you, but now that high is going to turn into dread here as the uh, gas steel comes through from snow and the probe micro begins here in the main base of mind yeah we have a gateway in the main base of snow but it wasn't like you know in his natural expansion forward or anything so nothing too crazy pressure going to be coming out of him just a very standard one gate tech timing i imagine 
Yeah, but with the pressure that this uh, probe is putting on right now and all the damage it's putting on. Oh, is he going to get the moving shot? Wait a second. Holy. Mine almost got a second moving shot there. Just the first moving shot was impressive, but uh, had he got that second, he would have gotten the kill. And now the Marine's going to pop out here. That probe is ultra, ultra low. He can't really do anything more here. He will have to back up. It looks like you're doing some sort of gateway in the natural pressure with that much press with that much uh, attacking coming from the the probe and you know that much damage coming from the probe. But it's absolutely not. He's gonna come in here and see that uh, is not the case here. We'll just back away now with the SUV. Make sure that he doesn't get moving shot down. It's so funny watching like um, these particular pro gamers microing their workers because it always seems like they're playing a game of tag. You know, they're very mm. active in like how they maneuver their workers against each other early game. Yeah, it, it takes so much uh, practice, skill, and mental attention to pull these worker moves off, but they do it so effortlessly. They make it look so easy especially snowman he is just so mm. good with these early workers it's crazy yeah and he shut down the mining sorry that shut down the mine from getting in and getting any scouting done as well because he sent out another probe to chase down that softened up scv of 40 hp so it's like really mine doesn't have any idea exactly what's coming down right now he doesn't know when the gas was taken doesn't know when the call was going to be coming down the only thing he can really figure out is like the timing of the units he's seen. Like he's seen the Zealot now and he's going to try and get back in here with this SUV and confirm the Nexus and see exactly how far along it is. But even Snow is on top of that. Like he's got a probe just waiting across the bridge to chase down his SUV. It's kind of insane to think that he's denying scouting of a single probe here. Yeah, usually most of the Terran players would just try to run by that probe. But uh, mine looks across those bridges and he does not like what he sees. Uh, the face of death there is on that probe and <laughs> he just turns around and runs back home well he is gonna avoid the probe now he's gonna make a run for it a dash here to the south but the probe is beelining up behind him uh smoothly running across that hex grid trying to catch up here with some uh, mineral or the, the 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 manual move commands and look at that does force the SEV back again, and he was almost going to catch it here and get some moving shot. I think he's got the moving shot right now. Yeah, no, he's got on top of it, and as long as he, he doesn't lose the acceleration of the probe, he can stay on top. Look at that beautiful oh control God. from Snow. He's insane. This guy is crazy. When he's not got the pressure of, like, a deep tournament situation where he's, like, like round of four in the ASL or something, and he's got no pressure on his shoulders at, at all, he plays like a god, man. Yeah, he's so scary, dude. He is incredibly scary, um, especially here in the KCM. I feel like this is where he really blossoms. This is where he really shines. Yeah. So, uh, so scary for a player like mine who's gotten now no scouting. He doesn't know anything that's going on in the map right now. He's only seen a handful of units, uh, including a couple of probes. And he will send a Marine out here. He actually sent this all the way around the map just to get this scouting. That's how desperate he is for any information. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's going to click on those minerals and see how much they're mined out as well to kind of figure out how long the Nexus has actually been up for. And look at this probe on the... It's, 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 even though the Dragoon's coming out, it's almost unnecessary to do that little probe micro. But it's almost like Snow's just like swatting him away. Like, no, like get him out of here. Yeah. Like, treating like mine like he's a fly right now. Well, mine does get a little information there. He sees the two Dragoons and no range on either of those as well. Um, so... There's the uh, the shuttle coming out, and he should have an inkling of what's exactly happening here. It's going to be that Reaver, uh, of course. You just expect it here out of snow, but you, you do have to confirm. Sometimes he does throw in a DT play or something. Uh, usually that's when he ends up losing. <laughs> it's when he goes for those DT plays, but... Um, it should be a reaver here, and uh, it will be, in fact, a reaver. Mine going to push out a little bit on the map. Um, maybe put on a little pressure here so that the reaver is forced to defend rather than go straight across the map and start to attack him. Well, this is going to be really interesting because he's going to go cross yeah. map with this shuttle and miss this army, I think. I think mine's... Around. Oh, no, wait, mine turned back towards the middle. I thought he was going to go around okay. the right-hand side. Yeah, I thought so as well for a second. I was a little bit confused. I, I, I didn't even know if he could do that. Like, can he even defend back at home if, if Snow just goes straight for him? He's going to slow down this probe going for the third base, but he has no idea about this shuttle's current coordinates. So, And if he doesn't see the shuttle for some time, he may just assume that for some reason Snow didn't open Reavers, but I don't think he, would, he should make that assumption. No, he shouldn't. He's just adding on turrets now, but... 
The shuttle is making its way into the base. He's going to be spotted by the engineering bay. A really well-positioned engineering bay here. But no. is he going to be able to shut this down? Snow is so good at finding these openings. Two guys pop out in the nick of time. Can he gun this down? Not able to. He will fly in now with the speed finishing up. Can he get any damage on this shuttle? He gets two shots, three shots on that. But finds a great position here at the back for that reaver. This is going to be really scary. A lot of SCVs are likely to go down. Two go down already. Marine falls as well. More and more damage here from Snow as he starts to gun down everything here in the main base. Yeah, it's like five SCVs so far. He's going to get this other Goliath as well. There's only, but he's got two more, three more Goliaths coming in to, to get his shuttle. So he will clean this up, but he's going to take a little bit of damage for that. But actually, Mind has cleaned up this Reaver a lot more efficiently than most Terran players would. We have to give it to him here, guys. Yeah, not bad. Not bad. Now with a counterattack here of Vultures. Yeah, not going to be able to find anything. He slowed down this uh, third base a little tiny bit, but the probe manages to throw down the Nexus here at eight minutes. A very fast third base for Snow, and I don't think there's much that mine can do about that after losing, you know, three, four Goliaths and all of his Marines. It's uh, a little bit rough here for mine, but he's going to throw down a bunch of factories. Is this for yeah. a quick attack, or is he going to go for a third base here? Well, he's basically going to go like five factory. As much as he can afford, he wants to go five factory and put on pressure. He knows that's probably his best plan of action. He can also expand behind that. He doesn't have to attack with the five factory, but he wants to at least have a, a sizable amount of army to, to either take his third base with or to attack with. And yeah, and, and I, I can't blame him. Like going into five factory here makes the most sense and also like gives, gives him the most options to deal with what Snow's going for here. Yeah, this is a style that's been really forced out of Terran players by Snow specifically. The five factory uh, to take the third base. It's completely necessary against someone as skilled with the Reaver shuttle as Snow. Uh, traditionally, it was more like a three factory uh, that could, or even two factory that could take uh, that third base. But Snow coming in once again, he's going to start to pick off tanks. And this is a great example of why it's now necessary to build this many uh, factories. Well, he doesn't drop the Reaver. Oh, it was just one yeah, shot away on the shuttle. He was trying to get the Reaver as close to the tanks as possible to get an extra shot off, but he ends up losing that. Oh, one more kill. Yeah, he really crazy how down to the wire these battle calculations are. And like, that's what's so interesting about watching professional players play is that they, they've had these little skirmishes a thousands of thousands of times. So it's like they're playing mini games within mini games. And it's so c curious to see them push the, the boundaries and the limits of like how much value they can get out of those small trades. And Snow's like done that so many times that he's confident that he can go for like the absolute craziest, highest EV plays imaginable, but sometimes just barely miscalculating like didn't quite calculate that long belt missile from the turret connecting just at that moment mm -hmm. just a little bit off on that calculation it will bring the reaver here to the high ground takes one shot from the tank it does need to back off here with the reaver it looks like mine is going to be able to take that pretty quick third base now uh, matching the speed of snow's third base is being a little bit ahead of the curve here and getting in position to block a fourth base a potential fourth base here from snow good uh, presence of mind and movement with the vultures around the map now a drop gonna come back in towards this main Ooh, he's gonna so maybe smart. lose that very close to losing that shuttle wow. right there uh, great yeah positioning of the turret here at the back it's not, mine is so smart. Okay, not only that, he took his third base before he even built the fifth factory to slightly increase his curve to line up nicer with um, Snow's um, earlier timing on his third. Mm -hmm. And he's also like been a genius in like setting up this turret at the back underneath his engineering base. He knows that this turret, the shuttle is softened up. And most games you see where pros players are being annoying with Reavers, if the shuttle gets softened up, it's much easier for the Terran player to push and win. In, in almost all of the games I casted with Gypsy versus um, Bonnet, for example, all the games that Gypsy got damage on the shuttle, he was able to push and win. Let's see if mine can make a push work here. Plus one is done. We do not have a starport just yet, so there's no you know, third, or plus two in the mind of mind right now. He's going to throw a shuttle here into the third base. We don't have a lot of army here, but there's quite, I think, enough vultures to just eat this up. And 
with the tanks in the back line, mine gonna be able to hold in this position another wasted shuttle here from Snow. Yeah, this is actually looking very mind favored at the moment. I have to say, like, if Snow doesn't make something work soon and Mind is undeterred, I, I feel like this is a slightly mind edge, maybe even quite significantly so. Well, Mind now gonna throw down that starport, getting towards that plus two. It's gonna be slightly later plus two uh, than we are traditionally used to, but this is a more modern style now to delay the plus two and just stick on one one for quite a bit longer to optimize the amount of units that can come out here because Protoss have been so good at breaking Terran players on three bases. It's uh, a really good way to play uh, in the modern meta. Still trying to push through here. Oh no! Does go and carries by the way saying I think he's got one Stargate in the main and another one tucked in the top right and he's getting the upgrades but he might get the shuttle does get the shuttle these two Reavers can still slug it out a little bit and get some damage on the left flank but now they're way more exposed have some vultures coming down to the, the bottom left as well they're gonna uh, find that there's no probes but we'll be confirming that expansion timing and they are gonna be able to intercept probes but look at this back it's actually mined out so he can maybe get in the back here probes are desperately coming off the body block here Ooh, he's gonna be able to body block a little bit Stop the uh, vultures from getting all the way in. He loses a couple of probes, but nothing that Snow can't absorb right now. However, the push is going to make its way across the bridges right now while everything's kind of back at home and spread out here for Snow. So he's not going to be able to take advantage of the Terran army as it pushes across those ramps, losing a few additional dragoons as well. Mind is doing this push perfectly. He distracted with the vultures, forced the, the army to kind of split up there and quickly took this central position. Uh, without, you know, being harassed. It's really, really good play by mind. Excellent, excellent yeah, Terran strategy. The, hard, the hardest thing to do as Terran on this map is get across these bridges and take hold of the center, and he's done exactly that. And uh, Snow's going into carriers right now, so there's a big timing window, two to three minutes at least, of mind to get a lot of damage done. Set up on the Snow's bridges and then just, like, inch forward one tank at a time as a sacrificial lamb to keep forcing trades and getting the better of Snow each time. Snow's desperately trying not to allow that to happen. He's got a small contingency on the left-hand flank here to see if he can slow down and you know friend um mind with some pincer maneuvers see if he can do anything to slow down this terran advance right now scan comes down on the fleet beacon and mine knows that the tra carrier transition is coming will snow just sack that transition and uh just pump out as many uh, gateway units as he can or is he gonna go ahead with switching here into Carrier, some good shots from the Reaver, but another Reaver shot doesn't come out there. He was looking for a big splash onto the Vultures in that moment, but wasn't able to get it. And now the army is right here in front of the Natural. He'll be able to pressure the base uh, over there in the center, right? A great storm, though. Oh, man. Dude, the storms are going to absolutely annihilate the tanks here. Three tanks go down to just two storms. Snow is holding on pretty strongly here across the, the bridges. The Reavers are going to help out a lot. Great split, though, on a lot of these vultures. And the vultures are starting to take over this area while the tanks rain down from across the bridge. Yeah, beautiful storm dodging from mine as well. Really exceptional stuff. The execution's really on point now. The only thing really to fault him for is how, how much these tanks were clumped. And you got so many tanks with those sonic storms as well. But mine was looking so strong and still has a beautiful macro behind this just rallying units finally goliaths are in production to catch these first two carriers that come out with their baby teeth to try and chew down on this terra metal as well and uh oh, another little sonic storm but not quite getting the connection that um snow wants here now going to be laying siege all oh, these pros might all go down just barely getting onto the high ground does he scan to get them i don't think he did so not going to be getting that probe train unfortunately but is still on top of this rally point right now and mowing down most of these pros infantry as they spill out but he and I don't, it's will be a tough position to attack into for Snow. He's not even sent those probes to mine at the, the fourth base right yet. No, he hasn't. And I think he's uh, calculating his odds of victory. They may be quite low at this moment, but he's going to try and stick in here, try to get those carriers out. Um, Snow is absolutely adept with carriers, but the numbers are just not there uh, quite yet. He, he's not like a best. I don't think best is a real carrier player, but Snow 
is in fact a great carrier player. He just needs a couple more to pop out here and get their interceptors, but mine's not going to let that happen. He's going to push in here very smoothly and quickly, adding on turrets, bringing the Goliaths forward. Dude, the positioning is fantastic. Look at how he's pulling the, the vultures. He's leaving. flash play. Yeah, he's letting just small amounts of vultures slip through between the Goliaths. He's creating like a little pathway there to get through. He's adding on the turrets. It's just perfection here right now from mine. Yeah, this is this is almost Flash-esque. It's just like as close to a Flash game as we're probably going to see in a very long time. And he's very, his unit composition has been flawless as well. Like he's had the perfect amount of Goliaths and vultures at every stage of the game. It's, 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 I'm, I'm so impressed by mind in this game, Sam. <laughs> Snow's gonna try and take center left right now. He's thrown down a Nexus over there. He's just expanding like crazy uh, and hoping to defend possibly from high ground here at the natural. He can still get units out and probes out around the bottom side um, to, to try and hit some of these bases. He will have to maneuver the carriers around to the right hand side to defend. Um, the, the the base in the center right, but I don't think that this base in the center left has any chance of staying alive. Even this might end up going down. A lot of tank shots are going to come on yeah. to these probes here. Uh, and as that economy dries up, he's just not going to be able to produce too much. He's on one base right now, uh, worth of mining, essentially. Uh, and he's, I, he, he can build... Okay, great job dropping the, the shuttles here, dropping out the Reavers and actually saving the space. So he will preserve two bases of mining. That's enough to keep building... The, the interceptors at least yeah uh, mind is doing the the textbook terran response of just like containing the rally point and then like splitting off some tanks to play whack-a-mole with the expansion so so far so good for mind also taking the top right as well as flowing the cc down to this fourth base so it could go up to like his own four base worth of economy and production so he is basically setting himself up to try and checkmate snow so no matter what snow does it's going to be a losing situation and now this finally this fourth base is under full on assault there is a few high templars and reavers to try and slow this down and lay and lay down some splash damage onto these terran forces so hopefully he can bat this army back he needs to keep on to his economy desperately like you say to not only build those interceptors but still uh, squeeze out a few critical you know, infantry units to support these carriers that so far you know actually quite a small number and not able to keep up with the terran production are we losing carriers right now i think we might have lost one we had four just a moment ago and i saw three on the screen i'm not sure if one of them got sniped but slowly but surely mind is pulling away more and more of his army from that natural that containment there to try and strike down this base at the center right looks like he's finally going to get through there and he should be able to clean up all the probes as well but this is weakened the front here this is weakened this uh containment at the front and with only a few turrets and a couple of tanks i think that snow can break out of here and as, if he gets out on the map once again anything can happen yeah, but he is down to this one base of production again. So mm -hmm. if mine gets if mine gets this uh, top right up and mine up and mining any moment now, I, I really do feel like yeah, he's got an SCV train in row as well. This is looking so good for mine, and just as his minerals are like not quite keeping up with his production, he's got the SCV train coming into mine again. So he should still keep up with this carrier fleet uh, quite handsomely, I think. Oh, this could be an insane storm! Wow, what a storm there! Not saving it for the Glies, but doing a lot of damage to the tanks and will be able to retreat here with the storms on the back um you can't really run into this army well he will actually run forward here trying to gun down a carrier can he get one reavers here brought forward whoa how did he save the what wait what happened to the mine there i thought that was going to connect on both the reavers yeah, but he did kill one of those carriers critically, and a D-Matrix comes out on this frontal tank as well. I'm, I love the balls on mine to be so decisive. He understands the game state so well that he knows when he can be a little bit crazy with his Goliaths. And even getting the full volley on that shuttle, just one shot left. EMP on the Reavers and carrier as well, really softening up. Look how well he's dealing with his carriers. He's kind of laughing in the face of other Terran players that have been complaining so long and making it look easy at the moment. In picking off the shuttle and taking out the Templar, and still has plenty of siege tanks in his arsenal to keep like Siege's final bastion of hope for snow. Dude, both the Reavers go down there. And uh, with that push complete, Mind is going to roll through the last remnants wow. of this force. He takes out another carrier here. He is just crushing through snow, something that uh, is just not a sight that we often get to see here in KCM. A Terran player dominating uh, over snow of all people 
He's even going to pick off these last couple of uh, Templar here before these tanks go down. The next rally of mine should be able to overpower Snow here. He's just so low on that mining, and his carrier count has been heavily diminished. Yeah, I mean, Snow's kind of like even going to be like struggling to know when is a good time to throw down a Nexus again because he's got absolutely nothing right now. He needs to make carriers to have a fleet to fight mine. He needs to squeeze out a few Templars to have storms to trade off the Goliaths, and he's long distance mining. He he doesn't, he doesn't even want to have to build the Nexus right now because he's struggling in all regards. But he, he has got a small force of Zealots trying to run up the right-hand side of the map. Maybe he can get on top of the mining base up there and disrupt the mining and slow down mine just a little bit. But at the very least, it might pull out the, the, the army positioning of mine so that he can buy a bit of time here to stabilize. But it's looking pretty bad for him either way. Well, Mind is very Vulture light at this moment. He's only got one Vulture, I think, on the entire map right now. And these Zealots could get in there and do a little damage. But GG is called as this army makes its way down here to the bottom left. He sees the overwhelming power of Mind with that army. And Snow has to tap out. Not the expected result here dude who can stop mind in this lineup if not snow maybe it's going to be soul key maybe queen which one of them is going to be sent out next here let's find out queen going to be sent out next to take on mind i'm a little bit surprised to see him get sent out here on apocalypse but they're saving soul key the best for last there in the pocket mind on fire right now if he makes it all the way to uh, take on soul soul key if he takes out another zerg and another protoss here um and goes on to face soul key dude i mean the momentum is going to be insane at that point will soul key even be able to stop him i don't know a forward eight rack's going to come down here to take on queen yeah he's already uh got the momentum behind his wings right now let's see if he can soar and you were just saying off air about the all kill prize has been reset but i was also saying that I, it would still be glorious if he got a double all kill right now and just took out everyone yeah it'd be magnificent and i'm all about it yeah that uh just two hundred thousand. it's down from two million last week over two million won so uh, unfortunate there for mine that his chance of getting an all kill is not going to be nearly as lucrative as uh, last week uh, it was but queen here going for a 12 hatch the stars are aligning right now for mine can he make yeah. this work this is 2.5 hatch as well so this is a 12 pool not a 11 pool after hatchery as well so very delayed pull here from queen so we'll have to be really on top of his drone control to make sure he doesn't take the the damage that mine can dish out to him here early game and mine only needs to kill like two drones to be happy he doesn't even have to kill queen with this this is just a pressure build Ooh, he's gonna sneak around with the uh, marine here to delay the vision as long as possible uh, not sure if that was worth it uh, taking the long route here to just delay about two seconds later uh, can we well, find out about this? It, do, it does obfuscate the marine, so he doesn't know for sure if that was an 8 rex or say like a 10 rex or something. Like mm. That could have been just a 10 rex or he knows. It could be like a fake 8 rex is a possibility. Uh, okay, so hiding that marine. Now he's going to see the marine here. He has one drone out to try and delay the bunker, but with the one marine here harassing these drones, uh, he might be forced back. He's actually got to bring all the drones together and get past this bunker now. He's trying to stop the bunker, but you really do need to get past and start to block the marines coming forward um he will stop the bunker okay stopping the bunker is huge but mine not going to give up just yet gonna start another bunker a little bit out of range of the hatchery coming forward with the drones really great surround here from queen getting one of the marines immediately one drone does go down second drone falls third drone as well but two marines have been picked off and the spawning pool should be finished here with lings popping so it appears that Queen will survive, and I don't think he made too, too many lings here either. He should be going back into that drone production really, really quick with a successful drone defense. Feeling pretty good at this point, I think, even with three drones going down. I mean, he, he probably feels that it went better than it could have done, but honestly, I would still say this is mine favored. Getting three drone kills there, I would say, really favors mine. Mm -hmm. And it really slows down the timings of Queen. Like, he, he wanted to go 2.5 hatch, and now he won't have the economy to really do that anymore. So it really does slow down Queen's relative timings a lot. And the whole game state has been reset a whole minute anyway. But the fact that Queen wanted to go for 2.5 and lost three drones, I would say this is mine favored now. Let's see how Queen can try to bring this one back. Queen 
Spread, spreading out those lings all over the map, just checking for the marines and any stray marines that might be sent around. Oh, wait, oh, the overlord here. Oh, dude, he was trying to get the overlord over top of the natural, but taking the short path is going to pay the price for that. Losing an overlord at this point in the game is brutal, brutal damage. I'm surprised he didn't bring the three lings forward to try and fight those three marines and buy a little bit of time there, but... Doesn't want to lose those early uh, lings and, you know, threat or have uh, the threat of a attack across the map. He throws down that 2.5 hatchery. I think this is the response to losing the overlord because he just can't produce anything right now. Yeah, I mean, he's, his timings will be so delayed, but he has to kind of do something to catch up. But actually, he mind wanted him to go up there with the lings. Like, he was waiting with the other marines to bait uh, the lings in and then also kill the lings. Like, he was setting up, like, a multi-tiered play there. Like, mind is so cerebral. Like, you have to really study this guy because he's not necessarily the highest execution player, but he's one of the highest, like, thinking players we've got. We're the closest... It's the closest thing to Flash we can get without the high execution, basically. Mind here sitting behind his wall nice and comfy nothing can really get to him at this moment and he knows that the mutilisk follow-up is going to be severely damaged here uh, for queen he's not going to have the, the normal 2.5 hatch number of mutas or the timing he's going to have to throw down sunken colonies here at the front no choice but to do this right now because mine could push out and the mutas are just not going to be there in time. So he does throw down. Oh, he cancels here. He sees that Mind is not wow. pushing. And he's going to do a little bit of a gambit here, hoping that those mutas will finish in time. And I think this is going to pay off here with six mutas about to be produced. You should yeah. be able to get those out in time. This is a great optimization from Queen, actually. Like, I really respect it as well, because it's exactly the kind of decision making he needs to really op optimize and deal with Mind. And it might be just enough to even even out that little uh, disruption in the early game. He's going to skip those. And it's rare that you get 2.5 hatch out without uh, being forced to build sunken colonies there at the front. So this is really going to help him out a lot. Um, plenty of mutas popping here. How many will he go up to before he starts to drone? I'm going to be watching that minimap, seeing if he continues that, or that mutalist production or not. Full marine production here for mine, though, with four racks up. He's going to get in here, see the four racks, and what's the decision from Queen? Will he switch immediately into uh, Hydros and Lurker, or is he going to uh, try to bully Mind with just pure Muta? Oh, he loses one Muta already, and he's not even gotten up to that seven count yet. Yeah, that's going to be a little bit annoying. He's going to try and delay this turret going up if he can, but mine's really on top of his bow control so far, so he's going to swing around back to the natural, see if he can bait the marines out of position to then swing back into the main and get SUVs there. If there's only one turret at the top, he'll try and get SUVs there. But he needs to be careful because the marines can box him in. He doesn't want to like overstay his welcome and like just sit and kill SUVs too long in the main, so he's much more likely to just kind of pressure a little bit here and there. But uh, actually, mine's just going to um, try and put on the counterattack and come out onto the map and force these mutas to come into retreat. So far, Queen's taking a long time to identify that and going to retreat then. Because he didn't make those two Sunkens earlier. He's now just like waiting for a Sunken to come up that might not be in time to deal with this push. Queen's going to die, man. Queen is dead. Yeah. Yeah, he didn't pull the trigger on these Sunken colonies early enough. And he's keeping the mutas on the other side of the map. Just two Sunkens here. If mine realizes this, he's just going to hit the stim button and start to gun these down. Great target fire here so far. Another Sunken does finish. There's one more here behind this that's going to finish soon. It does actually get out here. And wow, Queen is going to hold, it looks like. As the Mutalists return, he should be able to gun down all of these Marines. How many Mutas will be picked off during this fight? Two or three go down immediately, but the Sunken will hold, and the Mutas will finish this off. That was really, really close there. I think if mine had pulled the trigger a little bit faster, he might have been yeah. able to break through. That's exactly what I mean by, like, it's like watching Flash play without the execution. Like, mm. Flash obviously would have been on top of things and would have sunk and broke him there and killed him, but he is still putting himself into these crazy good game states. So I, I'm still always impressed with mine, but he doesn't quite have that, like, ultimate, like, bon joie level ex execution that he needs to really get the maximum value out of the Terran arsenal. Mind has thrown a few Marines and a single Medic out on the map that Queen has failed to scout. And this could be big. He's going to sneak over here towards the natural. He will catch this Muta. No. Muta being turned by Queen. That means he's seen 
this army moving in that direction and now the kind of brainy play of mind setting those marines out on the map uh and hiding them is gonna really uh hurt him here because just a few mm -hmm. marines don't stand any chance against the 11 mutas they will get wiped out very very quick no reinforcement uh possible here for mind and he still doesn't know about where this third base is over here in the top left is very unorthodox play from queen yeah, mine's going to be uh, very diligent right now. Just wait for vessels to come out. One thing I'd like to point out is the, the building placement of Mind in his main base is very indicative of how he likes to move his mouse and macro. You'll ever see players build their buildings in kind of like a grid square formation or like a kind of jagged formation where they can like do triangular movements with their mouse to macro easier. It depends on what's more comfortable for you. And Mind's one of the guys that likes to build his buildings like more diagonally. Well, Mind, having those four racks pumping away here just about to get a few valkyries out and how close are we to a transition from queen because as soon as those two valkyries pop there's going to be a moment here where mine can start to push and there's not really too much that queen can do about it aside from building sunkins and potentially building lurkers i do see the the transition coming here with the uh, hive and the hydralis den but there's the valkyrie it's going to start to push across the map here um uh, mind on the aggressive what is back at home oh god he doesn't have any sunken and he doesn't have the lurkers yet dude the, the the sunken count is just not high enough he's gonna have to build lurkers out in the front to try and body block and buy some time he just doesn't have anything here okay builds that lurker wall sunkins are coming up here queen can he hold on to this position running right up in the front but you know what the medics are not really able to heal up very well but he just kills the sunken so fast then the scourge are not going to be here in time that valkyrie will be able to back off it does get picked off by the scourge and the mutas are still in high enough numbers maybe he can hold on the lurkers will finish mutas is hanging on here the lurkers pick off all the marines dude that was one of the closest Crazy. holds i've ever seen McQueen is always hanging on by a thread right now and the sunkens are doing their job they're soaking up all of that damage and just when he's finally killed the sunkens he also clutches the hold so it's like really optimized defense from queen i also feel like he's getting a tiny bit lucky there to be able to get to this stage i feel like he should have got sunken busted earlier on if mine was just a little bit quicker to the draw but still really impressive stuff that queen's even able to survive these these onslaughts from mine and i think eventually he's gonna be able to take out mine if this continues on any longer he sees it. He spots it. Oh, he sees it. left. He finally sees his base. He knows where it is. He's got two lurkers and the here, though. He has got a little setup here already to defend, so... Won't break this as he... If he just knew, knew known about this earlier, he could have taken this base out instead of trying to sunk and bust the natural, but... He might still be able to get this done. Yeah, no... Nidus just yet. But he stacked the lurkers. So he can't irradiate his way all the way through this. He's got the, one irradiate for the lurker, maybe one irradiate for these mutas here as well. Uh, the Muta is going to come forward, pick off a few of these Marines, making this su sunken bus that much more difficult here for Queen. He puts the drone on top of the Lurkers. You never see that, but that's a really good play here by Queen. Yeah, it looks like Queen actually might... Oh, these, these Marines actually did catch a lot of those uh, Mutas, so... Now this Muta Force has been softened up enough that uh, Mind's map control is starting to come back into effect and Queen's going to try and like was considering a, a counter attack of running around the side for a moment there but then realized that was probably not going to be fruitful so is instead just going to pull back and wait for more Lings to hatch before he takes his pl uh, plateau back away from Mind. Mind lands his factory in the front. I think we're going to see a tank transition here with extra factories getting added on as the... Uh, third CC comes up and, and gets established here. Going for a kill on one of these vessels. Not going to get it. A bunch of irradiates come down. No stacking here. So the irradiates will get maximum value right now. Hitting every single lurker. Does he have enough to hold? Okay, he's actually backing away. I thought that mine might uh, wait for those lurkers to die and then try to pressure that area. But he actually backs off. We're going to have some lings make their way up over towards that third. But it is finished, so he can lift off. And keep that base alive for now. He doesn't have the SCVs there just yet. We'll lift. Bring the Marines up to clear this. And get the SCVs mining here in a moment. That's not too big of a deal here for mine now. Coming up towards this third base. Another full round of Irradiates here. Going to punish Queen severely here. For just uh, having his Lurkers up over ground. Not stacked. Uh, in, and in position. 
Yeah, Queen was hoping that um, Mind was building his third on location. He'd get the cancel on that and really slow down the timings. But Mind was smart enough to uh, get that finished up before Queen even had a chance of uh, putting on some kind of threat to it. Now, like Queen's starting to get into a very playable game here, and he's like done a, a great job of like kind of curving his way out of a weird early game defense. But still, I feel like Mind has got just barely enough map control to deal with him for the time being. Needs to be really careful not to let this Defiler get to his natural expansion, but also needs to play whack-a-mole with these Zerg bases that are going to start sprouting up around the map. Yeah, there's always, uh, it's always pretty playable, um, Hydralis Defiler on three bays, but uh, as the fourth base comes up, things start to get really hectic for the Terran player, and where does he take his own fourth at this point? It's pretty darn hard to take a fourth base here on this map. Um, he's probably going to be relying on building tanks and... Uh, setting up here from a three base position and actually getting up over to that top right hand corner. He's going to lose a vessel here. No, doesn't lose the vessel, but he's losing his third base and there's just not enough defense over here. He hasn't set up bunkers yet. Dude, these Marines are getting so much damage. Wow. Not able to get on top of that and stop it. Yeah, links, links are kind of weird. They sometimes do like crazy amounts of damage and sometimes do no damage. So like it's kind of a weird unit in general, in my opinion, but you got to love them at the same time. These SCV blocks are amazing right now. Four Marines just killed like 20 links, 10 and 8 kills on each of those Marines. So that is some crazy good damage there. Two ve vessels are going to go down and this one didn't even get its radiate out. So that's a little bit rough. Do we have Plague? Oh, one more second. There it is. He does throw that down. So he manages to get the Plague out. Uh, but... Uh, the pressure is mounting here. Mine has a pretty sizable number of vessels to just keep throwing down those irradiates, and this fourth base was pretty quick uh, in terms of the relative game state. He's uh, stretching himself a little bit thin to try and take this right now. Yeah, I mean, like, so far so good for Mind. I mean, he's had this three gases uh, going for quite some time. He's stretching out quite ahead in supply, about 50 ahead of Queen right now. Queen desperately wants to get his fourth gas mining so we can start churning out Ultralisks, and uh, Mind's going to do everything in his power to just lay siege this area and uh, prevent that from happening. But Queen has done a pretty good job of, like, softening up this army and using uh, the bare minimal amount of units um, to deal with that. And look at this, though. This this bunker is exactly what you want to do at, like, your bases as Terran. Like, just have one or two bunkers because that your expansions to soak up any kind of counterattacks, and then the Zerg uh, can't really do anything to you to slow down. Now we see physics labs being built, so we're gonna have bow cruisers soon. Look at this arsenal of dropships, about four dropships, but the Overlord does spot that. That's bad. The Overlord seeing those dropships heading out is uh, gonna be really rough for mind here. Uh, you wanna surprise the, the Zerg with this sudden drop coming in, but. Um, Queen knows that there's only one location that's actually serious where you can go for the drop. So, I mean, he's probably just going to have a ton of Scourge here in the main base uh, ready to defend. Wait, I don't see Scourge. I don't see Scourge. Actually, I, don't think, I don't think he saw it then. I don't think he was paying attention. Didn't see it coming, maybe. Well, oh, I can see here comes the drop. A lot of fire bats in here. I was not expecting that. Now the Marines pop out. The fire bats actually... This turned out really, really well for mine. The fire bats yeah. dropped on top of the... Uh, Ling's there, luckily, and now he's gonna kill so much here in the main base, picking off a bunch of buildings, very important buildings here. He might even get this, uh, the, the, uh, the, the Evo, Evo Chamber goes down. Can he stop more upgrades here? Another Evo Chamber gonna be targeted right now, and he's gonna get the Defiler Mound as well. Dude, he's doing so much damage. This we didn't crazy. finish the Chitinous Plating here. This is insane. I really do feel like Mind is calling out all Terran players right now and just basically calling them whiners and showing them how it's done. Like, this is how you play Terran, guys. Oh, this drop is doing so much right now. One Dark Swarm comes down. He may be able to clean this, but the damage has been done. All the tech has been destroyed aside from that hive. And now the vessels are flying into the natural. Um, and the this fourth base over here. I mean, how can he defend this? With all the irradiates coming out, he doesn't have any defiler mound. He can't build more defilers. So he just has the one lurker. He's trying to stand on top of this lurker stack so that it's harder to click. But the lurker's gonna go down and no dark swarm in time. This fourth is gonna <laughs> fall. Mind is torn him apart here with that drop. Wow, it's crazy. This guy is like mega mind. It's insane what he's doing right now.
And he's making it look easy. Here comes the eraser trick. And if Queen didn't get Burrow upgrade, then shame on you. It's only 19 minutes in the game and you haven't got Burrow. Well, you deserve this right now, Queen. GG. Get out of the game. Mine's just too good for you. Wow. Look at this guy. He's on a roll. Mini here going to be sent out against Mine. The unstoppable force meets the immovable object and the werewolf Terran. Or werewolf Brodos, excuse me. Take down Mind here. We've got cross map. It's perfect situation for Mini right now. Can he do it? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, some Terran players would tell you that uh, cross map Protoss Nexus first is impossible to beat. <laughs> so we'll see if he goes for that or if we're just going to throw down a gateway here. Saving money. I don't see a probe coming out. Is he going to go for it? Yeah, he's Nexus first. Yeah. Okay, okay. Well, he's going to get away with murder a little bit. We'll see if mine can punish it. Imagine if he just 14 CCs. Imagine if there's the balls on this guy. He won't, but imagine. it. Just imagine the balls on this guy to just 14 CC right now. Like, that, would, that would be Flash-esque right there. I would, my mouth would just be open. I'd just be like, okay. <laughs> well, many going to get a massive advantage here with a bit of a gamba. And... Um, We'll see what mine can do in response. It's so hard to to rush this. You're probably not going to find him first. He's going to send the SCV out on the map, checking top right. I hope he, he goes to bottom right after this, but he might end scout afterwards. We'll see what happens. Yeah. Um, dude... This is this is gonna be rough, but mine taking this gas. What what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do, man? You're not even gonna gas this fast expand here. The the Protoss could be putting on a lot of pressure to you, and look at this mini even gonna get the moving shot. Oh, he loses it there. Yeah, yeah. Doesn't quite get the catch up on it. He could still catch up to the SCV if the SCV wasn't manually pathing, but it looks like uh mine's actually is manually pathing. He knows how important it is to give manual move commands to this SCV to make a slide nice across the hex grid to not allow the probe any chance at catching up against a player of mini's caliber yeah in every facet of starcraft brood war the more attention you give to the units the better that they will perform even the workers here uh, and sometimes especially the workers uh, in terms of that mining but also in terms of the movement trying to catch up to these units he does come forward kill t takes one shot on the uh, marine here or maybe two shots, not 100% there, but uh, the Marine few, yeah. Yeah, moving forward and putting some hull damage on that. Um, SCV gets in here, he sees the situation that he's in right now, and he's not going to be happy about what he sees. This is super greedy as well, because it's not even a second gateway. So, like, Mind might want to push this just because it's so greedy, and he's only gone for one gateway. Usually, you do like a, uh, you can do a safe 12 Nexus where you make two gateways, and either two Zealots, two Goon, or just one Zealot, two Goon. And instead, he's only gone for one gateway, one Zealot. So, Mind wants to put on a little bit of pressure here, and I really don't blame him. Yeah, pull the boy's mind. This is exactly what we do we don't let him get away with this ah but he sees with the probe the uh, retreating vision of that after the unit dies he does see it he's putting the scv on the ramp i love this just gonna stand right on the ramp and maybe the zealot just gonna walk back and forth here if mine's not paying quite attention yeah i mean minis have to be on top of that um, or mini, at the very yeah. least they'll buy some time for the goon to actually get down here uh, just a few seconds delay has got enough units here to, to actually punish Mini. So Mini's gonna... It doesn't make a shield battery either. So he's, he's confident that he can out-micro mind here, but he might get punished. Uh, has got pretty good micro despite not being Flash-esque and getting a lot of damage done on that Zealot and Goon already. And with the SCV train, might get the catch on the Goon. Not quite, though. Mini shuffling that back and gonna be keeping that alive for the time being. A bunker's going up in the natural expansion. Has keep all these probes alive so far, which is what you need to do with 12 Nexus. So if you can keep all the probes alive and lose the Nexus, it's still a playable position for Mini but the rush has actually been successful for mine so far. Wow, mine sending back the SCVs immediately here, realizing he that yeah, Mini is uh, just playing this out macro style. He's not going to try and fight. He just keeps all the probes alive, and he's going to reap the benefits of that early Nexus uh, by pumping out a lot of probes here, but you know, not really going to defend it. He won't be able to mine here from the natural for quite some time, at least until he gets range out and can push that bunker away. Yeah, this 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 is um mine favored, but it's uh, Mini's actually like not out with this. 
Like, no, absolutely uh, not. No. Yeah, he's, he, he's, he kept. He kept. Mm, he's still kept in a probe position. position. Yeah, he's he's yeah. got a probe advantage for sure. Uh, the the CC of course is gonna start first. Um, we are gonna get a observer out here pretty soon, and the amount of lost mining time that mine uh, had to endure there uh, is really gonna hurt him. Oh god, that mine is so smart, dude! Oh! Oh my what? god, I'm so impressed. Can you not, can we just give credit to this guy right now? He's just so cerebral and impressive. And like, he actually plays StarCraft the way I feel like it should be played. <laughs> that is insanity. I can't believe you put that mine there. Um, just thinking three steps ahead of Mini right now. And um, even though Mini's kind of played the, the, playing the way he wants to. Oh, he dodges that mine. That was really, really close. Looks like he's going to drop a Nexus here. Yeah, that was intentional. He knew the mine was there that time. Right. But, um, mine also going to come be annoying and snipe that probe anyway. And uh, get a little bit of value before he can grab that probe back into safety. And might get the cancel on this oh Nexus my anyway. God. It's so crazy how good this guy is playing, man. He's doing so well here. He could... Uh, just completely shut down everything that Mini is doing. It's wild just, to see. I'm just, I'm almost in tears laughing at how good he's playing. We don't have any uh, observer here just yet, but the observer should be coming soon. The Reaver's gonna break the bunker, but he still can't take a Nexus just yet. Mine gotta, or Mini gotta be feeling frustrated as he eats a mine as well. Oh man, Mini is wow, ah, dude. He's gonna be clawing his keyboard right now, just so frustrated. Oh, please kill the pro, please. <laughs> Ooh, he's getting that probe, gonna slow down Mini so much here from actually taking that expansion. He's already got his CC up and running, and back at home, he's gonna be preparing healthily here for that counter-attack with the Reaver. Dude, Mind is on another level today, and Mini just cannot hang. <laughs> oh my, honestly, it's like some of the most impressive StarCraft I've seen in a really long time, and I'm like, I'm both like privileged and speechless and happy for it, man. Like, it, this is awesome. Uh, it, they, um, I just want to watch some good StarCraft. I'm having a good time. Dude, mind is insane here. Even setting up this mine once again, making sure that that third base, it's, it's obviously going to be double expansion after this. So you have to go yeah. for double expansion. He's just doing everything possible to slow down Mini. And Mini is the type of emotional player where all of these little losses are going to start to stack up in his head. Absolutely. Um, mind is going to, it's just, he's playing with him right now. He's, he's in his mind. He's toying with him. Uh, Mini is going to be so frustrated here how can he put together a good game <laughs> it's mega mine versus mini mine right now and uh, he's getting the better of him and he's got to really pull something out to, to to finally get some kind of edge in this game we have an observer checking the main base sees the the armory churning away so knows there's going to be an upgrade timing as well so he didn't go into an early factory count here he went uh, prioritized his tech timings as well he did, he did this all in one factory and uh, now we have the shuttle coming into the main base to try and get some compensation damage but there's already seen tanks and turrets set up to try and deal with this does get a good scarab connection on that tank wants the zealot to take it down but can't get the connections he's trying to deny the zealot getting the connections and he has done so mind is playing phenomenally well right now saying even denying that tank kill Ooh, does lose one goliath but uh, not really worth it here for the two zealots that were just lost and getting pushed out with that first reaver i mean this is not the damage that Mini needs. He knows that he needs to get more. He's sharking around looking for more, but uh, there's just nothing to be found here. Mine is buttoned up really, really well. Uh, really, really tight here. And we're going to see Charon boosters finish up in just a moment. And at that point, the, the shuttle play is just no longer going to be an option. He's going to fly in one more time. Right before Karam Booster's finished, can he get something done here? One Dragoon, one Reaver. Tanks are just set up perfectly, and he sees it with the Observer, so he's not even going to try. He backs away here, or he's actually just going to hold position in the main base. But, I mean, what is this really doing to mind right now? All of this is just taking up some of his attention uh, while, you know, he's macroing yeah. and getting his uh, factories online. One more shot does kill a Vulture, but... Uh, these are just little drops in the bucket right now. Karen Boosters is done. He's going to deal some more damage. He goes after the tank. He gets one tank. That's a good 
a bit of compensation here. He will stop the turret as well and kill an SCV. Uh, but the time is just about up here. If he stays any longer, he's going to lose this. He is going to lose this now. Uh, Karen oh, Booster, no. going to shut that no, down. No. Reaver goes down. Dude, Mini is just getting shut out this game. Yeah, this is 5 Factory behind this. So we got a very strong plus one timing as well as 5 Factory production bonus. He has more factories than gateways right now. And he's killing the observers, denying vision, building up a turret ring. He's done everything. Like, he's... It's actually kind of crazy. Like this does really does feel like watching Flash play, um, unironically. On mind here. I'm sure he appreciates the uh, comparison to Flash. It's too bad we don't have him in here, but at least we've got a um, mind playing out of control for the Terran, kind of carrying them to a victory as Flash would. Reavers coming in from the right hand side, but mind just turns and leaves those be. He's not even going to engage with those two Reavers. He's instead going to push here for the middle of the map. Big shots here on some of the tanks. And dude, he gets two kills there. Really, really good. And keeps the shuttle alive on just five HP. Well, that was a decent hold there for, by Mini. It's going to slow down this push by quite a lot. And maybe buy him enough time to pump out a, a few more gateway units to hold off uh, this attack. Yeah, he's heading south. He's He's finally getting up to like six gateway production, which will barely give him enough infantry to, to deal with this kind of push. But he needs to be careful with these shuttles. He has got another shuttle to replace this low HP one. But if he loses the shuttle with the Reavers inside, it might be lights out for him. So he has to be very tentative with how he controls his units and keep his head in the game right now. Here we go. Diving forward here. Not going to target the low HP shuttle is mine. He actually unseiges and backs up. Probably the right choice. Getting his reinforcements together here. He doesn't have any buffering for these tanks and the reaver shots are big gonna target down that reaver but it doesn't finish it and he gets that last shot off with the reaver that was huge dealing so much damage wow. and stopping this push dude mini is bringing this one back with mine being a little bit uh slow with his push out here a little bit um, yeah yeah too uh too cavalier here and Mind, this is the this is the uh, execution part that you keep talking about. He's getting himself into great positions, but not nailing the execution quite right. Yeah, it's really unfortunate because he does play like Flashwood, but he just doesn't have the same kind of level of mechanics and execution to make those plays really get maximized. He does have some pretty good mind connections here, and more vultures coming in behind. Maybe he can sandwich these goons enough to get good enough connections that he can save some of these tanks, but I don't think so. And he has he has going to have to work with his high ground instead, but he could still potentially surround these goons with his rally point and actually be okay. Uh, really actually well played here from Mind to like, get the most out of these trades. Might lose one or two of these tanks, but honestly, like, how handled this really well with those mines that they just need to be careful there's some follow-up units from mini to keep trying to put the pressure on and keep laying assault to him he knows that mine's taking his third base right now knows there's not that many units currently out does land that rex to try and disrupt the goons bugging them out a little bit and buying some time for a few precious seconds right now his tanks mine's mine just gonna tap out and say gg mini finally cracked the open mind and just got inside of him and it was like neo like jumping inside of agent smith and just exploding him right at the end of the film unfortunately Terran always seems like an unbreakable wall until you get a crack in the defenses and then suddenly everything blows apart. Mind looking unstoppable there, but the immovable object of Mini blocking his path and shutting him down. Dude, Mind, just a bit of a missed execution there. One letter off from a victory. Soul Key, the final hope of the Zerg race, going to be sent out here to take on Mini Cross Map on Citadel. Uh, can he run it back? Soul Key, the strongest Zerg player we have right now uh, in this lineup. I mean, definitely leagues right now above Queen or Saxory. Um, if anyone can do it, it's him, but Mini, I mean, just fresh off that win where he was behind and he managed to bring it back. I mean, he's got to be feeling really good right now, and he is an emotional player with uh, some wind in his sails. Anything is possible here for Mini. Yeah, the Wolverine gets, like, fired up. It, he, he does seem quite monstrous, so he might also just claw apart Sulky and make it look easy. It is possible, but... He's going to be opting for that gateway first play. He, he is a very good gateway first player, so 
making use of his high level mechanics is definitely uh, going to be favored here. Someone like Best, much more likely to throw down a forge and play a bit more standard. But uh, Mini, Mini loving that early game pressure, and I can't fault him for it. He's, he's, he's one of the best at doing it. Yeah, it's very difficult to hold, but Soul Key's control with Ling in the early game, it's going to make you feel like. Uh, going for that forge first uh, just because his control is so damn good uh, the the safety of the forge is is great but um mini feeling confident here will be incrementing out those zealots and taking soul kion head first in this game he's gonna scout up to the top right and see that it's actually a overpool that's been thrown out here for soul Key. so an even match this is just gonna come down purely to skill here and how many links are actually going to be produced how greedy is sulky going to be and how much pressure does he want to put on here in the early game yeah so far needs to be a little bit careful with this uh scouting probe not going to be getting into the main base but we'll just run around and try and delay this uh drone getting a third up if he can would be a better compensation rather than getting the early scouting information if you can delay this third, it's so annoying for the Zerg, but has got a Ling here to bodyguard and keep that probe at bay while he gets that down undeterred. So nice little early game moral victory for Solki. Has a Zealot coming up to this position, but there are Ling still chilling, waiting for this. He didn't run across the map with those Lings yet. Yeah, and he sees the Zealot here. He will be able to block that. Zealot going to probably tuck itself behind the minerals over at uh, 12 o'clock. No, he's actually going to back away. Uh, bring himself over here to the probe where he can have a little bit of a better fight. Trying to get the two shots off with the probe, but Sulky just backing away. He's probably got more lings in production here behind this. And sending the, the rest of the lings around. Where is he going with these? I guess he's going to send them back towards the natural. This is the dance that goes on between uh, Zerg and Protoss quite often. You've got to be aware of the threat of lings coming across and... You know, running by into the main. Catching the probe here is big. That mm. probe is very important for scouting. And the Zealot is kind of obfuscating on the map. It's hiding itself and could run into the third base at any time. So Sulky does need to keep some links back here to prevent that from happening. But he's sending four links across the map to see what he can do. Maybe slip inside that main. Yeah. Mini's being a little bit greedy and making the core in the wall and trying to optimize a bit here. He knows that the Overlord won't be here to check for this early on, so he's got a little bit of time before Sulky identifies exactly what timings he's going for, so it might be harder for him to pull the trigger on an all-in Ling here. Yeah, and he sees the, the core there. He sees how greedy he's going to be. Uh, I don't think that Sulky will pull it or decide an all-in Ling is the solution here. He's got the lair on the way already, so definitely not going to be the case. And Stargate coming up really, really early Stargate here. Stargate before uh, Cannon. Actually, Corsair even before Cannon, so uh, quite greedy from Mini. Oh, but he lets the Lings in! Wait a second! Oh my god, Lings are in, and actually another group of Lings was sent uh, through, and he's going to continue to produce those Lings now. A Zealot going to make its way over here to the natural start to hit some drones but i mean he's just gonna pull these away and keep pumping out these links he's gonna get the cannon yeah. dude mini falling apart here why did he have that wall what did open do why did he do that what is he thinking what is going through this man's brain please someone tell me because i surely do not know uh he's gonna get a pretty decent surround here with the uh pros but a player of solki's caliber is not gonna let this bone go he's got his uh, teeth sunk in here in a death grip on Minnie's throat. He's going to keep on rolling with this, I think. Actually not going to send more links. I thought he was making more links behind this, but he's just going to go for as many probes as he can and start to drone up behind this. Hydralis then well, he finishes actually, up here. He'll probably he go for the bus. He actually misrouted his main hatchery. He had a few more links coming out, but he didn't quite send them across the map yet. So yeah, unfortunately, he didn't have the reinforcements he wanted. He had another six links that could have been coming, but didn't have them rallied. I think those were dealing with the Zealot that was sent into the natural, actually. They cleaned it up. Yeah, he didn't the send them back afterwards. Right. Like, he, he, he had enough time to get those links in there to do more damage. The cannons were not even close to being done. That's right. Well, they're going to come over here now. The cannon is done. There's one cannon way at the back, and he was forced to build a cannon in the main as well. Uh, this Hydra follow-up will be scouted. But um, I don't think it's just, uh, it, it's just more of a macro Hydra follow-up. It's not going to be out for that bust. He's building a ton of drones right now, and he's got enough links to deter a move-out. 
This could be a this could be a nine uh, nine seven six bust. He could go for a four hat tree bust here, but he doesn't have to. He could decide to pull the trigger. But he has got a lot of gas banked up, so he might be more tempted to play a more macro style. But he could, if he wanted to, go for a four hatch hydro bust timing here. Gonna lose an overlord, unfortunately. He is supply blocked right now, so hopefully he's got two overlords on the way. I'm um, gonna be popping out soon here. Losing an overlord like this could really tempt you to do something like that Hydra Buzz because you're gonna uh, stock up a bunch of larva right now uh, as you're waiting for those overlords to pop. And it's tempting to just go for a ton, like a big wave of Hydra rather than pumping out drones at kind of a reduced rate here. Yeah, I don't think he will go for that. I think he, Sulky's the, the kind of player that will always opt for the macro choice if given the choice. So I think we will we'll see just a 5-6 hatch Hydra, but um, there definitely was a window to punish uh, Mini here. He just doesn't want to give any chance at Mini coming back in the game by just barely defending the bust, I guess. But mm. get a little bit of damage done with these Corsairs, but finally going to be warding those away with the Hydras in good positions. Yeah, I would have liked to see him put on pressure onto Mini, but I also can't fault this line of reasoning from Sulky. He's a very strong macro Zerg, and this is his like best skill set being put to use. Yeah, he's going to get those upgrades rolling here. Uh, Templar Archives pretty far behind the curve right now. He doesn't have that 9 minute timing, I don't think. Uh, with all the damage that's gone down. He did manage to get uh, a kill on the Overlord there and he might go for like a Hail Mary DT. Maybe try to yeah. sneak it into one of these bases. Maybe even 2 or 3 DTs if you know Mini and his play style. Um, keeping that Corsair production rolling. If he can kill a couple of overlords in a precarious position, maybe he can bust open one of these locations in Soul Key and catch him being a little bit too greedy and not building enough Hydras. Yeah, it's very possible. Uh, it looks like Zulki's gotten right into the six hatch Hydra production undeterred though, and that's a really good sign for Zerg. You, there are some times where the Pearls is putting on so much pressure on you that you can't even afford to throw down the sixth hatchery for a little while. But because of the early game damage he did to Mini, like he's able to go straight into this powerhouse six hatch production. So it will give him... A re he, he needs to make at least two control groups of Hydras before he considers droning again. But he might not even do that. He might just make pure Hydra and like... Because you, you can skirmish against Celot Templar really well with pure hydra so he might just put on pressure from mini right from the get-go soon well he didn't go for those dts as uh, i expected instead getting into templar here and uh, having that storm on the way bunch more gateways are coming up and the full scout from soul key means he knows exactly what is on the way no surprises here from mini just gonna get up into those mass gateway count probably up to about eight uh gateways if he can afford it although his economy's been hurt so bad i don't know if he can actually afford eight gateways here yeah mini mini needs to be really careful and not let these zealots get trapped he needs to keep these zealots out on the maps they're an active threat to keep sulky's units pinned down into these locations so they can't just do run buys into the, the zerg's economy and also needs to not let them um, get pinned down so they can also be killed. So, um, yeah, Mini just going to hide them at the 9 o'clock and just, like, obfuscate these being out on the map and being an active threat right now. You don't want to just, like, keep your Zealots inside your natural wall or anything as Protoss player because then the Zerg can just lay assault you and freely and just basically deal with you cost efficiently. So Mini gets a, another full scout here. He sees exactly what's going on with Soul Key. No surprises here either. Zolki just going to macro up really, really heavy, building out a ton of Hydras. And he might be switching into Mutas here potentially with that uh, Spire finishing up and only two Corsairs on the map. There's a real threat of Mutas right now and sniping the Temples, Templars, excuse me, right as the third base tries to come down here for Mini. Yeah, Mini's trying to like drag some Hydra focus over to the right hand side with these Corsairs and others, a group of Zealots, and now sneak around the around the back of these Hydras with these Zealots and see if he can get some damage done at 12. It's going to be a little bit tough for him though. He actually might get all these forces sandwiched up here and he might lose all these uh, the Zealots for free. Well, he sees that the Mutas are out now. Ooh, targeting one of the <laughs> one of his own Mutas there for a second. <laughs> A little bit of a mistake there from Soul Key, but he will clean up these zealots pretty cost efficiently. A run by here into the main. The old Protoss tricks here 
You know, and then he's trying to pull off, trying to get in there and deal some damage, splitting off single zealots to deal as much drone harassment as he possibly can, and running all the way to the back here of the main base to try and pull these mutas as far away out of position as possible. He's done a good job so far, and he's even going to get a few more zealots over here to the third, but that's the majority of his army, and there's not a lot back here for Mini to deal with this uh, upcoming force of... Mutas and Hydras. He will sit back in his natural though until he comes up with a solution uh, for these Mutas though. Probably Maelstrom, I, I would say. Is he going to go Maelstrom yeah. here or is he just going to keep uh, building out uh, Corsair? He's going to rely on like mainly Templar Goon, but it wouldn't would be the worst idea to go for the Dark Archon, but maybe he doesn't feel like he's got a sharp enough timing to get that out yet. He might not feel like he's got enough time to bank up energy on the Dark Archon to go for that right now. The Mew is going to be laying assault momentarily. He might just be relying on what he's got. If he does snipe one or two Templars, he's going to be... No yeah, he's in the world of hurt now. Losing that one Templar without getting the Storm off is basically like money for need money here. So uh, Sulky's getting his wish and going to be getting that money. And target firing down. The majority of these Dragoons before the Templars can't even maybe get into position. He needs to be really careful, he does Mini, in how he engages the Zerg Force right now. And Sulky's content just to macro up and take expansions and power up behind this. He doesn't even need to kill Mini, he just needs to soft contain him. Just the two Corsairs, not going to be enough of a deterrent here for Sulky to dive in and kill more Templar. Only three here at the front. They've got so much energy. But that energy does not matter if you never allow the storms to get off in the first place. Solki setting up for a huge wave of Hydras to come in from all sides as this Dragon Force moves out. He's ready to dive upon this and he's just waiting for Mini to move a little bit out of position. Here we go. The Mutas are there. No storms just yet. He's saving as many as he can for the correct moment here. Uh, when the the opportunity strikes when the hydras are the most clumped getting another dragoon snipe mini being forced back once again he's setting up a pylon here on the right hand side but he still has yet to throw down a nexus and soul key is actually getting his hatchery in the top right uh, left he is going to be setting up that fourth base and bringing lurkers to the front as well Dude, this is scary right now. He's only got one yeah. Templar here at the front. One more at the back. The Mutas come through. They're going to snipe that Templar that hasn't thrown down a storm yet. He gets the Templar there, and now there's no storm left. Hydra's coming from the back. Lurker's there in the front. One more storm is available here. One more Templar remains. If Sulky snipes that, he's going to overwhelm this position. Yeah, it's looking really scary position for Mini to hold right now. There's 140 supply for Zerg to 125 Mini. It's a very powerful position to be in. Mini's gone for this very old school style of two weapons upgrades. One armor. does get a good storm on those Mutas, cleaning those up before they can snipe some high templates. But look at this beautiful flank from the right hand side. Lots of Hydras just pouring in right now. There's not enough critical mass of Dragoons to soak that up. Not enough storm remaining. Just two storms remaining on this last high Templar. It's the last bastion, I hope, for Mini. It's not going to be enough. Look at this just streamline of Zerg across the map right now. Absolutely dominating Mini in this game here. Ooh, Solki. Great, great attack there. Bringing up the Lurkers now, closing the airways here of Mini. He's not going to be able to get any oxygen or minerals flowing into his veins. And with that finishing move, Mini has been eliminated. Solki begins the run back here. Can he take out four players in a row to give Zerg a first place in week number six? It would be amazing to see. Let's see what he can do against Royal Light. It's coming up next. Light being sent out here versus Soul Key on Blitz Y. A very difficult map to hold a Terran player on. It's uh, not easy to get a third base going here, is there? No, not only that, but Light is the kind of guy with this kind of map is very favorable for him. He's the he's the Terran vs. Zerg player that cuts SCVs around 36, 40 and just goes power production on a slightly lower economy and only expands when he finally gets mined out. And that affords him a much larger army and much more map control to work with in the mid game. And on a map like this with the short rush distance catwalk, you can put a lot of pressure on a Zerg player. The bottom left hand corner base is probably going to be the choice here for Soul Key as his third, but with two entrances, a player like Light with the big mid game power spike could overwhelm both sides and make it really, really hard for Soul Key to hold that area. Um, 
Let's see what Sulky can pull together here. He's going for an early pool, expecting some sort of early racks here, but it's going to be the wall in from light. And I mean, it's not a perfect wall. There's going to be a big gap here above that barracks, which could be exploited by these early lings, but uh, we'll see if Sulky can get in there or if light's just going to defend this perfectly and get himself a big edge. Yeah, this is so far like a small victory for light. This is like a little mind game victory for him because... Uh, Soul keys are counting for eight racks right now, and there's no eight racks coming, so this this works out in Light's favor just fine. Light gonna send his SCV cross map here, and uh, Sulky doesn't know yet that he's been uh, filled or countered here a little bit. Uh, will he produce lings or will he not? I see one egg so far. He starts the gas before he starts any of these lings, and it looks like he will. He'll pump at least four lings, but I don't see what kind of damage you can actually get done with a single SCV in this gap and a couple of marines behind it. As the lings arrive, they're probably just going to get shut down here. Yeah, I doubt he'll make more than uh, four lings. Like, he'll make four lings to kind of like, you know, put on a bit of pressure and challenge the walks. He hasn't quite seen what's come out of light yet. He doesn't know for sure. He wants to be able to counter like a 14cc or something. And he needs to put on a little bit of pressure. And then we'll realize the bad news in just a moment here. Yeah, he's seen at least that there's no Marines coming. So he knows that he's been uh, somewhat countered here. If it's a, a gas build or what, he just doesn't even know. But as the Lings arrive here, he sees the CC behind the wall uh, with that Ling vision. And he knows that he's in a bit of a rough spot here. He's going to go ahead, fall back, chase that SCV that's in his main base. And try to recover the position here that's a little bit unfavorable. Yeah, he, he, he might have been a little bit happier if this was like a 1-1-1 one, one, one timing. And this was a delayed expansion and we saw a gas opening out mm -hmm. of light. But that's not going to be the case with this one Rex into CC. He's going to be a little bit behind and he's just going to have to swallow that and play normally. We can still see some uh, naked marine move outs here from light as well. He's got the information with the uh, early or the, the forward SCV there. He's going to move with three marines. And leaving two behind here in the wall. A little bit interesting move here from Light. And he will pull back with those Marines, it seems. As yeah. he's not able he's to confirm. To, he's just trying to force like six lings out of Sulky at the very least. To make sure he's like not being super greedy. And trying to catch up by making too many drones. So just trying to yeah. keep Sulky honest here. Yeah, not able to get the SCV in. And see if any more lings are being produced. So he does have to be careful here. He will send those back. And Sulky actually didn't make any more lings. He's just droning he up really hard here. Did he actually? He did. He went up to six. Two? He made six total. Well, he made he two more. Two, two out, yeah, two out natural and four back at base. So six total. This is what um, Light right. wanted. He didn't want him to get away with four. Mm. Well, Sulky, not overreacting anyway. Only making a total of six lings and pumping out drones now. Getting his gas up. He's going to rely on some damage here from the Mutalist to actually bring himself back in this game while taking yeah. the base here in the top left. Now, the way the meta is working right now is that he's got speed upgrade as a bit of an investment, but that also means he might get away of not having to make two sunkens here. But Light's mm -hmm. going to try and force that issue anyway. He's going to say, even though you made six lings with speed, I'm going to try and make you to make two sunkens. So that's the kind of mini mind game that's happening right now. And that's why you see these kind of like Zerglings jostling around on the left hand side. He's trying to bait um, Light into having to wait for the fire bats to finish before he can even start to move out to make sure that these sunkens can be on time. Well, he might not build the sunken actually uh into sunken here possible. okay he's he's he is gonna start them will he cancel though uh he slowed Depends this marine force around. down quite a bit uh just sitting here on the high ground he sees that um Mutalists want to start right now but as you can see we've got a bit of gas left over and not enough minerals that means that this uh, little push out here and the forcing of the sunkens has been effective by light yeah and if he didn't cancel those sunkens and uh call uh, light's bluff here like he called his bluff a little bit earlier but he didn't he's not if he did let those sunkens finish then he hasn't really called his bluff here and that might be a little bit unfortunate for him losing out a little bit of a power spike timing getting an extra meter out quicker can also make the difference going up to seven meters earlier it means you can start sniping SCVs and what have you just a bit quicker and get on top of the Terran right before he like finally tightens up with all his turrets in position. These firebats are going to be sent out on the map to try and deal some damage but 
Only able to kill about five lings. Not bad there for Light. You could have just pulled away the lings and used the, the mutas to finish those off, but he didn't want to delay his mutas arriving at the uh, Terran base here for too much longer, so he quickly snipes those down with the lings and follows up with the mutas now, but sees that totally locked down is Baron right now. Just no area that can be assaulted. I think we're going to have to see a quick transition here from light he's not or from from soul key he's not going to get any damage i don't think in this main base with that many turrets already built it's uh i think a sure thing that light can hold yeah well, not i also and i've noticed that um this is how like mihu likes to set up in tvz like it, they have the much more spread out turret formation to kind of control wider areas of zones over their natural expansion and their marine production and it can really lock out a zerg if you get all those turrets set up nicely and it does seem to be a very efficient way of avoiding early game damage. Well, I mean, we just saw the first trade here from Solki not go well. He lost a Muta and he didn't even get one shot off with his uh, first group of Mutas here. That's painful as it is, but he can't even dive in and kill any SCVs right now. Things are really looking rough right here for Solki and... Light is starting to run away with this game. He is going to send two Marines around the bottom side. Those get caught, which is very, very nice for Sulky. But that's about the only thing that's gone wrong or gone right, excuse me, uh, this game so far for our Zerg player. Now, scanning, checking to see that transition coming. I don't see any extra buildings here. He's just focusing on this Mutalist production and trying to hold back the Marines here. Yeah, I mean, he's got a crazy bio ball going is, has, has um, Light here, and that's really tough to trade with um, with your Mutalisk. So, so he's going to do what he can to try and trade and slow this down and dog this bio ball and prevent Light from just coming across the map and killing him. But with this, like two heavy control groups of Marines and four medics rolling across the map, it's so tough to fight this as a uh, and slow this down so he's gonna do as best he can force as many stims as he can great little volley there killing three marines but please be careful because like in a, just a heartbeat we can see all of these mutas start to get shredded by the gorse rifles on these marines plus one is done here for the mutas so it's at the right time to start this engagement but we have range in plus one for light as well so uh, these are two glass cannon armies that can easily rip each other apart uh, given the right circumstances, both players trying to set up those situations uh, and uh, taking pretty even trades thus far. Hive on the way here. There's the two tech buildings that we were looking for, and there is going to be that transition point coming up soon from Solki. No Valkyrie play here from Light, just straight yeah. on into his Science Vessel production, and it's going to be hard to hold the space up here in the top left. Honestly, Solki's actually really impressed me. Like, he shaved off so many Marines from that Bible without trading hardly any Mewa HP or Mewa lives, so exceptional mutant control from Solki to make it look easy even though there was this big threat in the middle of the map so yeah so far this, the trades have gone pretty Solki's way I would say most of those volleys were successful only now his lights finally starting to kill mutants and make force bad trades out of Solki um, until this point Solki was trading very efficiently well Solki will be forced back a little bit here Light not able to advance any further forward either, though he's been able to successfully reinforce this marine ar army over and over again. He can't really advance forward here just yet. He's waiting for those vessels to come up. Doesn't know if there's any lurker landmines or anything out on the map and will be nice and careful here, holding his position and keeping that momentum in this game. And we are going to see some irradiates come out here shortly, but we're not quite at the energy level yet. And Sulky looking for any opportunity to snipe one of these vessels. If he picks one of them off, that could totally remove that momentum that we were talking about for light. Yeah, absolutely. They're only just now starting to get the energy for a radiate. Uh, light's going to be like full steam ahead to try and start to lay a little bit of a siege to Sulky. Probably at uh, the top left location would be ideal for him, but we'll have another force that's probably going to put on assault to both locations at once eventually. And we saw him cutting SCVs earlier. He's doing the same sort of style as he usually does where he doesn't really make that many SCVs and instead just has a crazy ton of production just churning out as large of an army as he can in this mid-game phase. 
Trying to take a third base here. Could be shut down by Soul Key. Might even be able to snipe that CC. We'll see if that ends up falling. No, he doesn't go after it. Okay, he's going to come back for a little bit more. Running away now from the vessels. Here comes the Scourge. Can he get a... He does get one vessel. That's great. Trying to pull out the Irradiated Mutas, but having a hard time. Dude, that did so much damage. Yeah, it's really tough. Sometimes a Zerg, you can get the Muter out really, really efficiently and you get lucky and you just click on it right away. And sometimes you keep misclicking and you like start to panic a little bit and it takes you so long to get it out and it bruises up the entire stack. A couple of cancels there. I imagine that was actually Mutas. Maybe an accidental click there to make more Mutas, but the time of the Muta is over here. We've still got 10 uh, remaining, but it's time to switch over fully here to Hydralis Defiler play. Plague will be coming up soon. We should have Consume already done. Um, and Sulky, he's kind of buttoned up right now. Can Light find any hole in the fences? His mutas should be staying active here on the right-hand side, making sure no drops come in. But uh, the, the top left is going to be really hard to hold, as I've said before. Um, as long as you come from two angles, if you hit the top, uh, the, the bottom side there on the uh, the left and the uh, right hand side of that top left base, it's going to be so hard to deal with that the the two forces coming in and all the radiates that are happening. It's just so much chaos can be produced in mm -hmm. that area. And look, there's nothing even here on the right hand side of that top left base right now. Ooh, radiate, radiate. He's not paying attention. Okay, he does pull it out. I love this game theory from Light. Like, he's he's just going to contain the Zerg on three gas while taking his own fourth. Like, he's just ramping up his own... Um, he's double expanding himself and just going crazy with his production. Going to, like, just quarantine the Zerg and, like, deal with him slowly but surely, bleeding him out with irradiates. This, I think this is really tactical and really smart from Light. Yeah, he's not uh, going up towards that top left right now. He stopped the lurkers that were heading down towards his bottom left, and... He's got a few marines over there as well to defend the position so that just a couple of links can't deny that. Um, he's going to have to send a real force to, to to stop that base from coming up. And pretty soon here we're going to have full-on mech production along with this bio force. This SK Terran is going to come a lot of uh, tanks as well. And looks like Sulky's managed to slip by towards the bottom left. Can he actually get down here and deny this base, though? Bunkers are coming up. Only mm -hmm. five Marines. I think he can stop this right now. Yeah. Yeah, he can, he can, he can at least cause damage here, force the lift off. It'd be really annoying to light. So it's going to shut down the mining here and, you know, put a little bit of a wrench into the Terran machine, at least for the time being, and force a lot more interactions out of light. So he can't quite put on the same kind of pressure that he wants to at the front. Does get a nice irradiate on those mutas. But yeah, he's still burning up some irradiates down here and forcing Marines out of position and buying a little bit of time there. And has identified that Light wants to go for this fourth base. So it might also kick Sulky into high gear and realize what he needs to do now and start to push out onto the map with these defilers and not play so passive. Yeah, he is going to start to shove forward here. Lings have that crack upgrade. We've got a lot of hydras hitting the field now as the lurkers shove forward and the defiler gets its spells. We do have to see a retreat here from Light. Coming forward with a big group of vessels, though. Going to start to lay down some of those irradiates. And we're about to run out of the... Uh... Oh my god, he's going to get under the Dark Swarm. Utilizing it against the Zerg army right now. But there are four lurkers in that stack. Yeah. So you've got to be careful. You cannot overextend here. He gets one irradiate on a defiler. Another Dark Swarm comes down. You can't break this natural right now. And if Light continues to try and push here, he could end up throwing away too much army. Yeah, I don't think this is also going to be a mech switch from Light. I think he's just, instead of going BCs, he's going to go... Yeah, yeah, oh, tanks, both? tanks. Whoa, he's doing both. No, no, he's doing both. Usually you have a choice of going three factory tanks or BCs. He's going two factory tanks and BCs because he's got four bases. This guy's crazy. Just two factory tank, hey? I don't know about the BC switch at all. I think that that might be a... A bit of a, a misnomer here might be a bit of a mistake um because we're gonna have just mass hydra coming out of soul key and what are bc's gonna do about that i prefer yeah there's the third factory that's what okay. i like to see three factory tank full marine production lots of vessels as well this is gonna be a very scary army to fight with hydra 
Yeah, and with this catwalk to push up, it, these tanks will get stronger and stronger uh, as the, the numbers swell. And it is kind of a critical numbers game. The tanks aren't super strong when they're in low count, but once you get to like 18 tanks or so, it's just crazy to attack into that, even with Dark Swarm. Did we see a, an armory as well? I think we might have seen it in the main base. If you start to get, yeah, get those upgrades rolling as well, it becomes so, so strong. Um, just one or two upgrades on those tanks is going to make all the difference in the world. The tanks are going to shred everything before it can even get into position. And spreading and splitting here really, really nicely. Light going to pull back as soon as the... Uh, Dark Swarm comes down, but he's done a great job of avoiding plagues here. He even avoids that plague as well. That was really, really close to being an uh, incredibly effective plague, but uh, kind of whiffed by Solki, unfortunately. Yeah, I mean... I, th I think, I think overall, I, 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 th I think Sulky can win this game. I just really, it's going to be so tough for him because I don't know how he's going to attack down this catwalk and do anything to Light. And Light will just have to, ooh, okay, that's a pretty good play. That's, a, that's, 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 that's something. If he can start sniping off this vessel count, then, then maybe we can get a little bit of map control and start to kind of circumnavigate these tanks and create a scrappy game from from which to then win but we have to create a scrappy game to win a zerg here which is gonna be a little bit of a tall order for sulky who's still only just now getting his fourth gas online and only just now throwing down his ultra cavern i don't like the ultra cavern here ultras into this many tanks and that much tank production is it's gonna be so tough i don't know if he's even seen the amount of tanks that have been thrown down yet um, he might be in the dark yeah. about that right now, so uh, can't fault him for that, but I don't think that making Ultra is going to be the answer here for Sulky. Well, Ultras will only work if it's a very scrappy game and the tank count is kept low and the army is spread out on the map, so maybe that game state can be reached but right now the, the situation where the bcs become an issue is, is going to be online now he can shut down the gas mining at this this fourth base location quite easily with these bcs and force him to make a lot of scourge to have to deal with that i just saw a tank and four scvs get loaded up into a drop ship i think he's going to try and take the islands here with the bcs use the bcs to yeah. force back any drops that could be coming through you, you got to keep these bcs alive they get plagued and one gets taken out that's annoying He's going to start to set up a tank line here at the low ground um, with a CC, I think. This is going to be a crazy play from Light, but I love it. He likes being really lazy with his BC, so he's actually getting punished a little bit. But I do like that he's, he's taken this island expansion. Doesn't he be careful with these vessels? Losing a few of those to the Hydras after going to getting plagued. Yeah, Sulky can actually win this game with the efficiency of plagues and just like you know dodging around and playing a bit of a scrappy game. So yeah, maybe maybe this can this can go Sulky's way, but I still think it's a bit of a tall order here. Like Light is getting into full swing Terran production, which is a really scary beast. Four dropships here. I. I'm afraid that Light might get bogged down trying to take this uh, island base and Sulky might be able to expand a few more times, you know, get out on the map and uh, take control here uh, while Light's trying to do this fancy play, but we'll see what happens. Tank's taking the center now. This is a really great play by Light. If he gets the high ground position there on the left-hand side, that's going to really shut down a lot of the, the play here for Sulky. He's just not going to be able to move through the middle at all. Yeah, and, but but one thing to be said is that Light has to maintain center control. If Light loses center control, this game can spiral out of control for him. So, so far so good for Light, but Sulky is ramping up his own production. He's got 140 supply now. He's no longer just surviving. He's starting to thrive as well. So, if these dropships can do a lot of damage, then Light, Light's probably going to be happy. But honestly, like, if Light doesn't get anything done with these dropships and Sulky stabilizes, we actually could see the game be flipped around a little bit here. Light is not going to get anything done with these dropships, man. They're coming in and Hydras are waiting. Some Scourge are going to come up oh. as well. Dude, those are shut down completely. Oh. Brutal, brutal shutdown there. And uh, this is kind of what I was talking about. Double dropship going around the left-hand side. Bo getting bogged down with these drops and trying to take the island. Is Light going to start to throw this game? Solki has a big army here in the center, but he doesn't have much over there at the top left. What can he bring forward to actually stop this drop? Oh, dude, so many drones are going to go down. Can he pop something through the Nidus that can save himself here? Ooh, a lot of Scourge fall as well. Great multitasking here from Light. Getting some great value out of the Irradiates while doing this attack. He will be able to pop some things through and shut this down, but that was a great drop by Light. 
and uh, getting some good value here in the middle. The middle still being held by light. Dude, this is going to be a wild, wild game. So much money in the bank here for Sulky. Is he just going to pop a huge round of ultra? I don't know if it's the right choice, but he's got a massive bank of gas sitting here waiting. What is he going to use? I think he's going to throw in. He's going to he's going to pepper in some ultra list just to soak up and tank. He's also going to probably go for drop play to deal with that base if he needs to. But he doesn't actually have to. He could deal with that from the high ground. I actually feel like Sulky's in a really good position here. I actually feel like that dropship didn't do anything near what it needed to do in the top left. They only killed a few drones, and he had enough bank where he wasn't really slowed down or affected much by that at all. So I actually feel like this is getting a little bit scary for like going forward. I don't know. Place your bets, guys, in the comments. Who's gonna win this game? This is this is such a close one in my mind. I don't. I really don't know. We just saw a ton of minerals get spent here by Solki. I think ultras are in production now. Uh, I don't know how else he could have spent all that money all at once here. Um, so probably those are going to be hit in the field. And can he utilize that big round of ultras to break the center position? We don't have mines to defend the tanks here critically. So without mines, ultras are going to be a lot more effective. Uh, still not great against tanks, but maybe with the right number of hydras and links to back them up, he can break this. Meanwhile, Light is pushing over the catwalk here on the right-hand side. It's a scary push, but I mean, uh, yeah, you're not going to fight that with Ultra, that's for sure. Just small amounts of links and Dark Swarms coming down is probably going to be the answer here. Well, Light's anticipating that, so he's got like a round of fire bats that are also pushing up the right-hand side to try and buffer against the flooding of Lings, but Sulky's done a good job of not sending all his Lings in to die, and it's sending in one Ultra to make sure those were cleaned up before sending in another pouring of Lings, so yeah, so far looking pretty good in Sulky, and... Yeah, well, the one thing that's going to be the main, like, you know, make or break is can he keep this push under control on the right-hand side, but also can he deal with the critical tank count that's going to start building up in the center of the board while also dropping this base here on the right? Mm, this drop is really deadly here. I mean, the tanks on the left-hand side are going to help out a lot to clear this out, and he might actually hold it in the end, but he's going to lose quite a few SCVs and uh, being forced back a little bit. Here comes some more lings on the left-hand side. Dude, not enough marines in fire bats to actually hold these tanks and losing like what eight tanks on that catwalk just now with that push that's a big yeah. portion of the army here for light it's not everything he's still maxed out but he's just bleeding tanks right now and is starting to mine out he's gonna try and take center left right now it's up to sulky to break this position here he comes well he luckily just got in the nick of time with these marines units to support these tanks um d matrix going down as well and the dark swarms are activating but it's not enough and not in time sulky needed to do this maneuver while light was distracted elsewhere but the marines were in position to hold these this tank line critically and this is what the game's going to come down to is sulky needs to break this tank line because if the tanks stay in this kind of setup like this it's just going to be unbreakable so it's going to be a little bit tough for sulky going forward he's going to be stuck on this sort of five base production mom wants to get this this island base on the right for himself maybe soon just to keep his own gas going because i don't think he's going to be able to break a light center control and deny this nine o'clock dude i think that was a bit of a throw from sulky sending in what five ultras without any support that was all just fodder there from uh, Sulky and Light cleans it up easily. Now a counter attack coming across here. Uh, the tanks hitting from the, the low ground and Light gonna clean this up as well. A drop coming in, but dude, that's so many turrets. Gets shut down instantly and that was a bunch of units being thrown away as well. Uh, dropping down to 150 supply here. Sulky in a bit of desperation mode. He's looking for anywhere he can break, but really this big army in the middle of the map is what he needs to to bust through in order to win this game he's used up all of his money he's put together a pretty significant army but can he break the middle battle cruisers are going to shut down this drop here over on the island and light is controlling this game beautifully right now 
Yeah, it's really tough for Solky to win in this game state because he needs to have control over the center to even be able to mine at the three o'clock and he can't do that right now. He's trying to send in desperation plays into the center board to clean up some of these tanks, but trading a few ultras or one or two tanks isn't going to be going well for the Zerg. It's 200 gas for each ultra list and only 100 gas for each tank. So, so far the Terran player is way ahead on the cost efficiency scale and Solky's going to be up against it. Even getting some of his gas mining shut down at this natural third is going to be really frustrating for him going forward because even if he does get this island by some miracle, uh, like can just lay siege to that from the high ground with tanks and make it very difficult for Solky to mine. 25 minutes into the game, we are shut out of our gas, guys. There's one last attack here. Onto the left hand side, dude, he can't break anything. Vultures are being incremented out now, so ultras are going to be even worse at this point. I think that queens might have been the better choice here. What do you think, Shun? Ultra really the right yeah. decision? No, ultras was a mistake. If he's going to ultras, he needs to ultra bomb the tanks and like at least drop them on the tanks or something. He can't just like streamline ultras into siege lines like this. It's just not going to work in his favor. It would have been way better for just go up to like twelve queens and start like playing like that. You were, you're pretty much right. Oh, the mines are going to get. Oh. Such value. So many links going down to that. Uh, Radiate's coming out here. Dark Swarm does get pretty close to the natural. He's bringing out the lurkers that have been, you know, in the game from uh, a long time ago with the defense early, uh, earlier on. He brings those out. They do not make any headway here either. And Light is holding strong in the center. He's got that 100 supply advantage at this point. You can see dropping below 100 here. Soul Key just... Uh, eating dirt right now and light takes him out finishes off the final zerg player and at least guarantees second place here for Terran this week well a super impressive game there from light putting the screws to soul key throughout that entire game he's Really proven his worth here to the Terran squad tonight. Only one player remains between these guys and a Terran victory here. Will Light be able to pull it off against Bisu, or will Bisu take us to a final game? It's all coming down to this on Radeon. Let's see what happens. It could be horizontal spawns as well, so much quicker rush distances than you can usually have on this map. It's much taller than it is wider, and the cross map is absolutely insane rush distances, and the expansions are kind of mirrored, like facing each other, so faster shuttle timings and what have you. Bisu in this matchup has really evolved a lot. He has uh, improved his play versus Terran uh, by leaps and bounds in the past couple of years, but is he up to par with Light here? And in these positions, like you said, with the quick rush distances, uh, is Light just going to be able to put together a strong push that can cordon off Bisu to his little corner of the map, get into that natural and shut him down? Let's see what Bisu has. Because like you said, it is a very tall map. If Bisu mm. manages to get another rally point up in the top right or you know, get control over some of those other bases way out on the map, it's going to be very hard for Light to push to those locations. Yeah, it is very tough to expand and split the map vertically here as Terran, so that will favor Bisu the longer the game goes, but in the mid game, it won't be so easy for Bisu to navigate because there is a very easy way of Terran pushing across the east horizontal position here and then also maybe if they wanted to expand at the six o'clock and push and defend at the same time and even could just go straight into a very fast five fact timing here and put on a lot of pressure on Tabisu. How do you feel about carriers on this map, Shun? Uh, they can be okay, but it depends on the map positions. Like in this, like in this setup where you've got this sort of like dead zone that you can micro back and forth, or where the six o'clock is, you can kind of annoy the Terran a lot. Carriers are pretty strong in this this kind of setup, but the same problem persists of like. Oh, he gets an eBay block. Um, the same problem persists of like, you have to survive until you get the carriers. And with these spawns, it's harder to go carriers and not die. So mm. cross map carriers would have been stronger and the map is so wide open that it's still not good on this map. So overall, I would say not so strong. But yeah, I agree. With, these, yeah, with these positions, they can work. It's just he has to not die. Yeah, it does. It looks strong with the natural facing you to get over there with carriers. And there's a lot of uh, 
impassable terrain between you and the Terran player, which can be abused, but it's really easy for the Terran to just take a, a sneaky base in the top left-hand corner, or, you know, like a lightly defended base in the top left-hand corner, and it's almost impossible to get carriers up there to actually stop that or shut that down. Um, so hopefully we're not going to see carrier here if it does come out. It's going to be a hard sell here for Bisu, but uh, that remains to be seen. Like, we, we, we haven't even gotten through the mid-game here yet, and that's going to be a challenge already for him. I, I think Light's going for drops. He's hiding an SUV in the top right. So he's either hiding that because he knows that Bisu's going to check to, like, spot that scouting SUV and shut it down. And he has to hide it for a little bit and then come in and scout late, or he's going to build a star pull up there and go for vulture drops, maybe. Interesting, yeah. Light is well known for... Uh, dropping just you know this matchup specifically being a very a prolific drop player um, that SCV on low HP just 15 hit points on that but these should be aware that there's a probe out on the map somewhere and that there is that potential Let's see if he prepares for it well uh, starport actually goes down but it's here in the main so not what we were expecting yeah I was expecting him to maybe build it out on the map somewhere but it's like instead though, one thing what he's done is he's made it so he gets a free scout because now as far as Bisu's concerned, there's no SCV out on the map to scout. So he's just going to rally all his Dragoons to the front to make him pay a repair tax and that will also afford like a, you know, a free scout off here. It just depends on if a Dragoon pops out at the right moment here. Uh, you can't know for sure when that Dragoon is going to be incrementing out. Uh, it's kind of a guessing game for the Terran player. Uh, it looks like he'll just send it in as the, the Dragoon uh, goes out on the map, and unfortunately, he's just going to lose that. Um, so not getting that free scout, as you were saying, but uh, third base looks likely here for Bisu, going to three base off of, what, one gateway right now? That's kind of crazy. Yeah, yeah. And it, but you did, see the, you did see the probe with the SEV, so that's, that's, that's some, some intel for Light to work with here, assuming this uh, early six-minute timing of the third will give him some kind of way of lining up his build. One gate Reaver for Bisu. Will the Reaver be at home as the dropship comes in? If it does, if it is at home, it's pretty easy to shut down that drop, but if it's headed across the map right as the drop comes in, um, there could be a lot of vulture damage, a lot of probes lost yeah. here for Bisu. Let's see what happens, what the timing looks like. It's tempting for Bisu to send this straight across the map, try to come in at a different angle, and the dropship's going to head right down uh, along the bottom edge of the map here. Dude, he's going to lose a lot right now. Whoa, this could be really dangerous. He's not quite unloading right away. Does start to unload now. Gives Bisu a one precious second to start to react to that before unloading the vultures. But did lose quite a significant amount of probes. Dragoons are in hot retreat right now to get back. I'm so surprised that Bisu didn't expect this. Like Light is, like you say, a prolific vulture drop kind of guy. These are going to be cleaned up quite nicely. Please be careful. It takes a lot of long bolt missile shots on that shuttle. Just surviving with one hit. Does unload the Zealot to try and punish the, the, the turret, but going to be repairing that while the, the tank deals with it. So I think he's going to get the turret. Ugh. And a Wraith is coming out here as well from Light. Dude, Light is in a great spot here. Might be able to shut them down and, and take a, a win off of Protoss. This is, this is going to be a big reversal this yeah. week. It seems like... Uh, mind really carrying the squad, but Light gonna finish things off here. I don't know if Roll's even gonna get a show. That's like Mind setting up uh, Light for the alley oop here. Just wants to slam dunk on Bisu and uh, start to show that uh, Terrans can win too. Yeah, it's, it's been a while since we've got a Terran win. So many Protoss victories thus far, and Zerg really falling behind, behind now. Um, still, Bisu could bring himself back in this game. It's not impossible. It's just really, really hard versus a player of Light's Caliber mm. to, to bring it back. He had an extremely fast third. Don't forget. This is eight minutes. We've already got this done. And the probes that were lost to the Vultures, they're going to be um, replenished here very quickly with three Nexus. And, uh, you know, Light's not ready to push out yet. He's just getting away with quite a lot of greed here. Yeah, I mean, that is true. He, he hasn't really been punished besides losing a little bit of uh, damage to that early vulture drop. 
Well, one thing to say is like the Zergs really do seem to be struggling to perform lately in, in general. Like not necessarily on an individual level, but as a race, they do seem to be like you know falling behind a little bit the met of the meta curve maybe. Well, we haven't seen the greatest lineups. This is the first time that we've got Soul Key in this lineup, so um, so it's forgivable for now. We want to see better lineups though here now that mm -hmm. ASL is finished. Um, a lot of our Zerg players are actually out as well right now. I remember that. Uh, Soma's out. Larva is out with the wrist injuries. Effort is, you know, suffering from wrist injuries. Kind of coming back right now. A drop is making its way here into the main. The tag siege is up. Not a very quick pull here from Bisu. Six kills. And even more could go down. Seven now. Oh, one more shot. Dude, he gets another shot there. So much damage from that tank. And is going to be clearing out the pieces now. Putting things back together, that dropship might end up going down. Yeah, it will fall. But that really got the damage it was looking for here. And Misu is uh, ahead in supply. He's got a pretty good probe count, but definitely being limited here by the, those drops yeah. getting that damage. That's definitely a tough enough for Bisu to swallow, but he's going to like you know, pick up the pieces and try and build back up to the sky again, taking a fourth base. Meanwhile, CC going up for Light in the main base, so both players kind of on curve in par with each other, but Light coming out ahead of the curve in terms of trading thus far, getting a lot of economic damage done to Bisu early on. It's going to really stifle the Protoss here. Bisu looking for a fourth base, and Light cannot let that stand. He's got to start to push out here. Uh, pretty soon and either take his own third or uh, go for this attack and that low hp shuttle that's been uh, hanging out here in the front the entire game is uh, still available still alive here but it is in a dangerous spot it could be sniped at any time we've only got one wraith right now and no goliath so uh, light's going to be delayed a little bit pushing forward and abisu going to start to add on more gateways here what has he got in the bottom? Okay, finally Templar Archive is going to come down. It's going to be that shuttle and uh, Templar defense as Light pushes out. Do we have another CC built? I don't think so. I think it's just that five factory push coming forward now. No, he has the CC. He's floating it now. Okay, he's floating it now. He's building the CC, yeah. Okay, good. Uh, we will be taking that third base here right away. And some Vulture's going to sneak out on the map. There's not a lot of defense over in this top right-hand corner. Can he get some damage? Maybe catch a probe train over towards that top right. If he does, it's going to make this follow-up push that much more strong, that much more powerful as Bisu adds on those extra gateways. Without extra mining, he's not going to be able to afford to produce off of all that. And he really needs this force to build up quickly here now. Yeah, it seems like um, for the time being, Light's going to be content just to sit in his quadrant of the map. He's got mines out on these other spots of expansion, so he can see the timings of if BCU's going to be super greedy or not, so he doesn't feel any pressure to move out. He's going to keep scanning and see where the, where the gateways are coming down and if there's going to be a Stargate transition or whatnot. So he's, for the time being, we'll be content just to sit and get upgrades here and go into a 2-1 timing. Do we have some sort of drop or something up in the top right? I don't know what that is sitting on the high ground above the, the fourth base, but it seems like maybe just a couple of vultures up there. Um, it's a mine. It's a little bit unfortunate. Going to start a pylon here in the top right, and we're getting close to that point where, you know, Bisu could set up an extra uh, rally point, but might be getting shut down with the probe. Can he actually kill this? He does, but the oh, Nexus finishes. Doesn't. The Nexus gets started. Nice. Yeah, nice. it doesn't get the... Yeah, he didn't get the block on that Nexus. If only he got the block on that Nexus, that would have been so annoying for Bisu. Bisu going to send in a Zealot or two, just testing the waters here. He's got a really good force of uh, shuttles here to start dropping on top of the tanks. But this wall of Terran is a little bit too scary. Um, oh, actually, he's going to go for it. Are you kidding me? This is a crazy play by wow. Bisu. How many kills can he get here? Pretty good storm comes out. But only two storms get laid down, and most of the zealots just evaporate here. The Reavers are just going to slug their way forward, and a lot of supply just evaporated for Bisu. That's a big blunder of an attack right now. If you were looking at a chess engine right now, and you saw him make that move, it would just come up saying blunder. Yeah, for sure. Um, I guess it's tempting to dive in when you've made this many shuttles, and... Now your opponent is just sitting there building up that tank count higher and higher and higher. Try and shave off a few of those before it gets kind of untenably high. 
but Light here eats that army and keeps a lot of his tanks alive. He's going to repair up the ones that have been damaged and start to push forward here. He's got the flanks covered with uh, some mines and some supply depots walling in that area, and he's starting a CC on location here in the top left. This is a ballsy CC, but it might not go scouted, or it might not get scouted here by Bisu, and that could be a real boon to his economy. Well, I feel like he couldn't go for this um, usually, but because of that botched trade there from Bisu, he's kind of mm. opening up light to kind of be a little bit more brazen and just come out onto the map and make some plays there. Go vulture raiding. He doesn't have to worry so much about, like, usually you'd be careful about how many vultures you bled off while harassing because you'd be worried about a counterattack killing you. But now that he's made those trades already, he's, he's content to just, like, go, go fighting with these vultures now. Very nice hot pick up there from Bisu, keeping all the Templar alive and bringing the vulture or the, the Reavers up as well. The vultures are going to get one, two Templar. Templar, but he picks off all the vultures there. Uh, not a bad defense from Bisu, picking up most of those Templars, keeping them alive. He's still got some uh, t storm to work with, and unfortunately, he's being kind of locked out of the mi middle of the map. Light's done a great job of setting up mines out there, and he's setting up for this next push, which is going to come here really, really soon as he uh, slowly moves up towards that 160 supply count. Uh, he's going to be able to start to really fight Bisu out here on the map. He's setting up a huge wall of Terran, and we were just talking about it. Uh, it's so hard to split the map vertically uh, here on Radeon uh, in these positions, but dude, he's actually going to try it here. This is kind of crazy yeah. by Terran. Oh man, those are some stacked tanks though at the yeah. bottom. <laughs> Yeah, um, he's got a lot of mines on top of these tanks, so if he did go for, like, a mass sellout bomb here with, like, lots of speed shuttles, maybe he could break open his position, but so far it looks like Light will hold this position. Bisu's gonna skirmish around the, the northern flank, see if he can maybe pull the whole Terran force up to the north and then maybe shuffle back down and kind of crack it from a different spot. Sometimes you can pull the Terran out position that way, but Light's experienced enough that he'll probably remain fluid with, with his army and just, like, keep moving it a little bit and matching uh, Bisu's movements on the map here. Stargate's being added in the top right. Rather than setting up an additional rally point of gateways, it looks like Bisu wants to uh, start to transition into carrier, but he's not ready. He can't just start this transition willy-nilly here. Oh, a scan comes up in the top right. He sees the, the Stargate, so he's going to know what's coming here. Second Cybernetic score, that's definitely for carrier. And I think that Light will be able to respond appropriately here. Bisu just needs to buy time right now and not throw away his army too uh, too crazily. Yeah, but he's a, he's he's got like he needs to hold on for like three or four minutes. Like, yeah. Scan, scanning the the Stargate like before it's even finished is a crazy timing for Light. Like he's gonna be lined up so perfectly to deal with this. He'll even have time to max out before he does the kill move. Will it be effective here? Will he be able to get that kill move? Uh, just a few well-placed storms and a few unsplit tanks could mean the difference between a, a victory and a loss here. So Light's going to have to be very, very careful as he moves forward. He's taking more bases. As you should, when you scout those carriers, taking bases all around the map is a great yep. counter to it. And he's doing fantastically so far. going to drop some... Uh, Templar out here, try to get some good storms. Storms kind of whiffing here, and the shuttle's almost dead, so he won't really be able to get too many more. Trying to get that shuttle is so close, but he doesn't quite get in range. Yeah, as you're saying about those bases, they act as kind of like bait bases. It creates more targets for the Protoss player to have to worry about and keeps them having to run around the map with their carriers and army to deal with them. So buys you a lot of time as Terran to prevent them getting on top of your production and whittling down your Goliath count too quickly. Look at this five, this five star gates, but he hasn't yet started any carriers. So he's kind of aware that he can't really rely on the carriers right now. He knows there's not a timing because he would just straight up die. But at the same time, he's going to want to start building like five at a time so we can go from five to ten and try and win the game that way but he hasn't even started the carriers yet so he knows like full well that he's in a really dire situation he needs to just churn out as many units as possible try and figure out some way of trading with this terran army that's maxed out big emp as well on that big clump of army and templar as well has a few templars waiting in the shuttle to try and storm but light is on fire right now i think he's just gonna absolutely wipe the floor with bisu bisu falling back starting the carrier production but look at this army oh my god so many many tanks there's like almost three full control groups of tanks moving forward right now and um, a few goliaths are going to be pumped out behind this just to deal with the carriers as they slowly increment out here and start to get their uh interceptors 
it should be enough. Great storm there on the advancing tanks. The Reavers are going to be key to this defense as well. Trying to deal some damage to these tanks as they move forward, but a great snipe on the back of Reaver there. And now the Dragons are going to start to splatter. Tanks are moving into position. Dude, he might be able to get on top of these uh, Stargates before he even gets any uh, carriers out. I think they're about to pop, but it's going to be close. He's got another like 40 seconds before the first round of carriers are out. He only just started them a moment ago, so he'll, he'll barely get the carriers out, but just as light's rolling into the position. So this is going to be a really tough one either way for Bisu. Uh, Bisu getting squeezed here as light moves into this pocket up by the natural throwing down a few more storms trying to delay from high ground it's a great tactic against most terran players but light in this position is not going to be phased here he's weathering the storm and pushing forward killing off the templar here and now with these couple of vultures making sure that no more really cost efficient storms can come out five carriers pop all at the same time right as the tanks are closing in on these stargates i don't think we'll see the next five pop here for light or for for bisu he's gonna get in there and probably kill that pylon that's the biggest artosis pylon i've ever seen in my life yeah i was thinking the same thing as sarah kerrigan would say and yeah these are baby teeth coming in right now for the carriers so even though he's got four powerful carriers just chilling there they have no dps right now it takes a long time for those interceptors to build up and there's enough carriers sorry enough uh, glyphs here already to start dealing with these carriers so this is probably going to be lights out for bisu here in a moment he has a small contingency of infantry coming up from the southern threshold see if he can get into this position to try and support this area but there's no way he can attack into this he's bleeding army supply by the second he's lost this base up here in the top right he's down to like three or four mining bases he hasn't actually got any probes mining this main base so essentially three mining bases so yeah dg gonna be cool and really convincing win here from light showing us how it's done more signs of life here from terran as they take a win in week number six zerg though Absolute flat line, no life signs detected here. Falling behind deeper and deeper. They're actually out of the race here for first place at this point. Yeah, I mean, there was a few scanners going off on the planet there, but no signs of life. Captain has been relayed to the Terran fleet and uh, can be a little bit of a disappointing performance from them. I really feel like they have to start mixing things up and bringing out players like Shine and Zella at the very least. Cause there's no, now that it's going to be probably a Zerg versus Terran semis, unless Pearls really underperforms, you might as well start bringing out a bit of a, a misfit lineup just to kind of give those players more screen time. And also, like, you know, just mix things up a bit in general. And it, it does look like Protoss has been stifled a little bit by Terran here. But like I say, like, they have to really underperform and Zerg have to start performing for there to be any hope of there being a, a Terran guaranteed uh, grand final spot. So I still feel like it's going to be a TBZ semis going forward. But there's still a little bit wiggle room here for Terran to make something happen if Protoss underperforms in these last two weeks. Protoss has just been putting out the A squad every single week. And... Uh, their points are really reflecting that. Yeah, you're right. It's it's going to be hard to see Protoss getting a third place in either Week 7 or Week 8. So unless Terran wins both of those, I don't think we'll see that comeback. Yeah, even even if they win both uh, mm -hmm. 7 and 8 and if Protoss gets second place, they're still going to pull uh, finish off here in first place. So probably, like you said, TVZ finals. It's... um. Not the worst situation in the world. I do love a bit of TVZ, and we might be seeing it here in the semis. Yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to that though. Like it, to me, that's the ideal situation. I want to see like TVZ first, and then I want to see either a PVT Grand Finals or you know a ZVP Grand Finals. That would work better for me at least. Well, the post -er the post ASL era of kcm season 2 2024 has begun guys it's hype let your friends know about it share the video like the video support us and help us uh, keep this beautiful game alive help us keep this uh, amazing tournament covered here in english thank you so much for joining us we'll see you next week thanks guys